Hey everyone, you're listening to the official podcast of 4playernetwork.com. With the onset of our first ever Fantasy Critic League, this has been a fun and exciting year for us. Get our takes on the latest games, industry news, and weekly league updates by joining us for our live recordings every Thursday night at 8pm Central on twitch.tv slash 4playerpodcast, all spelled out. Audio episodes launch on all podcast services Monday mornings at 9 a.m. Central, along with the VODs on YouTube, but Patreon and Twitch subscribers can get the episodes a day or two early each week. No matter how you prefer to tune in, just know that everyone is invited to jump into our lively community Discord at discord.gg slash 4player. But enough about that, let's get down to business. Here we go. Hey everyone, welcome to 4 Player Podcast, episode 768. It is September 14th, 2023. I have been instructed by Brad to to skip the niceties, so I'm just going to quickly introduce us and we're going to go. My name is Nick Henderson. I'm your host tonight. I am joined by Brad Simons. What's up? Nolan Hedstrom. Is it not a little awkward that we're all wearing the same shirt? Well, I'm going yeah. to get to that. Yeah, what he did told- you nerds call each other? <laughs> <laughs> Crispy is joining us. Hello, Crispy. Hello. And Chris Davis. And good evening. This does, All right, yes. this doesn't even have to be a joke, Nick. We could wear this shit every episode. Like I this will. Is fucking uniform. I will. It actually takes a lot of stress out of. It takes the I'll, stress I'll out take of it off out after the podcast and like drape it over my microphone and just <laughs> it's your jersey. It on before it's for game time. Show. Yeah. Oh, that's that's an awful idea, actually. But anyways. I think it's it makes it look more embarrassing because it, what, no. you know, <laughs> you know, so just, just imagine, come on, let's be humble for a second here. Someone shows up to our stream. There's 20 viewers and they're all wearing matching shirts. They got to be thinking, what the fuck happened here? <laughs> That's right. That's funny. I know. Like better if, like, all 20 of the viewers wearing the same. No, shirt. <laughs> no, <laughs> the shirt is the shirt itself is great. <laughs> I'm just saying. Just so, the idea of the shirt is ridiculous. Dude, we should go to so, like a PAX or something wearing these things. That'd be sick. Oh my god. Dude, you know it blew my mind that PAX Prime was happening this past week and I was like, God, it's been so long since oh, I thought about like, PAX Prime happening. People are tweeting from PAX and I'm like, oh my god. Did anything what is happen? this? Twenty what is this? Twenty nineteen? What is- Too bad PAX South didn't survive. If, uh, yeah. it was probably going to be dead anyway. It was pretty. I, I mean, it was. Yeah, it was pretty. Hey, uh, we, I played. I played Tunic for the first time at PAX South. So all played brought all over there oh, for the first time. Oh, you played sure. Endless Endless what, what, Legend of what was the fucking game called before? It's called Tunic. Oh, oh uh, yeah. it was called uh, Legend of shit, Endless. Was it? No, 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 no. Legend Secret of the Legend. Endless. It was called Secret Legend. Secret Legend. Oh, my God. <laughs> Oh man, and, that and, was a good name change. But dude, so when we played it for the first time, it was at Pax South, and it was called Secret Legend. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, That's and funny. also, uh, f- just funny little Easter egg. Like when you actually download the executable for Tunic, it's still called Secret Legend. Like when you put the yeah. the desktop icon on your on your computer, it says Secret Legend, which I thought was actually a clever little Easter egg that's hidden in there. But anyways, that's neither here nor there. Uh, shout out to Crispy's mother who hooked us up with these sweet ass four player uniforms. <laughs> that hey, you know, when I when I first Word put on mother. the shirt, I was like, the <laughs> no a little high. Was. And all of a sudden, like when I sat down in front of my webcam, I realized, oh, it's perfect. So you could fucking see it on the stream. This is yeah. actually genius. Yeah, <laughs> it, it works out great. You can actually see all of our logos. This is fantastic. Yeah. So if you're an audio listener, guys, you're missing out. We're all we're all we're all wearing our our new four player uniform. It only took us. 15 years to get an official four player uniform but here we are and uh i love it i fucking love it uh so we 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 got together the other week sorry nolan you you weren't you were unfortunately uh, across the country we, we we missed you bud uh but we got together for the first time like in the same room since probably like pre-covid mm. uh and we went and had lunch and crispy brought us these 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 new uniforms and another uh amazing thing happened chris davis Got his copy of Demon Souls back from Brad. Uh, I even opened the feel? case and checked, and that was the, certainly the disc. Yeah. Oh, it man. wasn't Wouldn't like it a sticker hilarious? with an AOL. Wouldn't that be no. hilarious if he's like, I'm, I traded it in the day after? The thing yeah. is, you know, you know uh, how like Carlos travels like a shit ton. You know. Yeah. He was gonna take the copy and like Amelie that shit, and it was gonna <laughs> be the funniest fucking thing, but. 
He, we, we never made it happen because it would have involved me getting the copy to him. And, you know, that just, you know, was You'll the never problem, see it again. essentially. I'll be honest. I would have allowed that. that I mean, that would have been pretty great. Well, you I wouldn't would... have had much say in the matter. <laughs> <laughs> just as long as I got uh -huh. it back one day and there was like a ton of passport stamps on it. <laughs> That'd be fantastic. That'd be fantastic. What, you know, but it will never be. Anyways, congratulations on getting your hostage back. Okay. Yeah. Did you play it? Uh, yeah. I feel like, I feel like you should, you have to replay it now. I feel yeah. like it's a requirement. On what are you talking stream. about? I beat it twice. Yeah. No, beat it a I'm third time. You got to play it now. You wanted the game back. You got it back. Okay. Yeah. Game sure. Plus plus. Find me time in this calendar year. The, in which oh, I can do that. mister. I want my game back. All of a sudden, <laughs> you ain't got no time to play Demon Souls. <laughs> yeah. Oh. There's, there's, it's only been two and a half. Uh, it was a th exactly a thousand days since I'd let you borrowed it. How did that happen? I don't, I don't know. know. That's how the math added up. Thousand but, uh, days. What are you talking? You know, the, December sixth, twenty twenty, to that particular Sunday. Yeah. The what? best part was that Brad, the day before. The, I guess it was because we made these plans, right, to get together. And I guess Brad had already decided that he was gonna he was gonna be a nice guy and bring his copy back. But he, but he tweeted. He tweeted. He's like, F I'm finally starting Demon Souls, and he's like a screen. It's like a shot of the of the startup screen. He's like, thanks for letting me borrow it, Chris Davis. And I was like, ooh, that's rough. <laughs> and then the next day, all of a sudden, it was like. Oh, that's a miracle. Um, but anyways, enough of that. This we have a lot to talk about tonight. And Brad, I'm sticking to what you said, which was not going to I'm not going to linger too much on the. You know, what? I'm even going to say, fuck it. I don't even need to update us on the fantasy critic. Right. You know, I, not a lot has transpired. Uh, were there any new bids this week? No, no new bids. I no new bids, bids, but no plenty new bids. of new uh, games came out. It'll new games guess, came out. It'll trickle back into the conversation yeah, when we talk like, about. Yes, it will naturally trickle back into yeah, the we'll, conversation. We'll trickle back into talking about Mortal Kombat One coming out and and beating Armored oh, Core yeah. Six. Yeah, that that is that is sort of a big one because you know that was the the original twist on this year, right? The first I'm going I, ham next year, guys. I'm going to have you know, three unknowns. See, now all of a sudden, Chris Davis <laughs> is excited. Now that he had this payoff for himself, now he's like, maybe I will. Be. I am excited that, about Fantasy Critic. If, still doesn't if this make tricks sense. Him, if this tricks him into self sabotaging next year, then I'll take this as a net win. <laughs> yeah, so. let's go. I, would, I can't <laughs> wait, Chris Davis. Let's do it. Um, Spicy. But we'll talk. Like I said, we'll talk about these things throughout the night. I want to make sure we get to some of the news because it's been two weeks since we recorded a show, and a lot has transpired uh, since last week that I want to make sure we had time to mention. Um, I don't really know. Where y'all want to start? Do y'all want to? Do, I, I don't know how much we want to talk about this, but I feel like we're kind of obligated to talk a little bit about this whole Unity debacle. Uh, oh, oh yeah, yeah, we I mean, have yeah, to talk about that newsworthy, bullshit. sure. So, I mean, so, so maybe someone who's who's a little more enlightened than I am, I guess, can. can <laughs> you brought it I up. Mean, it, yeah. you know, essentially, I mean, I mean, the ten thousand foot view is that Unity came came out and said we're in, we're, we're instigating a new. Um, financial uh, uh, royalty, or whatever. Policy. That's royalty policy that's basically saying license. for certain devs who have who have over a th certain threshold of installs on their game or whatever, they're going to be charged a fee per installation above that threshold or something, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So, yeah. so basically I what happened was they they took their existing terms of service and they completely wrote, rewrit, rewrote their payment policies effective January 1, 2024. And yeah. one of the big contentions was that they were going to charge developers uh, based on a certain tier of their membership to Unity, enterprise licensing or, or individual licensing, 20 cents per installation. I, I'm up to 20 cents. That's the max. So, it so, so it could go lower so, depending on number of installs and your plan, but yeah. So just to make sure I'm understanding correctly, on the user side, if if they have enough, if the game is popular enough, every like when I buy a game from that from that developer and install it, that counts as a install that the a developer charge. then has to pay to Unity. Yes, like, yeah. I'm costing you, I'm costing the developer money. Yeah. Yes. by right. playing their game. And Legacy then that, installs that too. even like, like you're you're not grandfathered into like not having to deal with this, which means yeah. it's like multiple installs on the same machine. Yeah. Same user installing on multiple machines, installing from like Game Pass when like yeah. a game is offered for so, free. So, so hold on. So I'm, I'm, I'm definitely not pro unity here. 
Um, they're fucking horrible with this. They came out with a statement, I think, a few hours ago earlier today, yeah. clarifying. I think, people honestly, I think that's for backtracking uh, on some of yeah. that because I think they said that Game Pass is not included in that. Um, oh, I don't know how they will tell necessarily. I guess they'll have to inject some code into it to be able to tell that it was installed via Game Pass. Well, the, and the I other mean, one that it's... the drunken merchant in chat brought up is reinstalls won't count. Um, originally, it, there was no evidence that said it wouldn't. And so the thought was, because obviously they made this announcement and then for, were silent for days. They didn't really say just anything. Letting, so, no, yeah, they were just letting people ponder their horrible mistake. And so people kind of started thinking like, oh, well, if it's every time you install a game, if I were to install it and uninstall and then reinstall, right. that would cost money. They've since then now said that's not the case. Um, but obviously, who knows what's actually I think well, it's inevitable at this point because the backlash has been so strong that and this is going into effect January first, twenty twenty four. So I have a feeling, but before it's all said and done, I have a feeling that this will be like almost a complete reversal, if not a complete. You know what I mean? Like, I, I, yeah. there's so much of this. I mean, it, by the time it actually gets implemented, I it might just be like a fraction of of what they initially. Uh, well, pitched we're here. hoping that they pull a, a Wizards of the Coast and pull back. I would not expect them to do that because their CEO is John Riccatello, who used to be the CEO is- of EA. And look true. what he, happened to every studio that was under his purview. Mm. Yeah, that is true. Nobody likes John Rick right Tell. before they announced this. Uh, Multiple yeah. times. <laughs> it's just so that crazy. Illegal? That's that's legal. That, it's that's legal. called insider trading. No, it's mm-hmm. not. I, what he it's did not. was legal. This is like if it's your company and your decision or something, it's like, OK, as crazy as that sounds. What he did was legal. I don't you know, think take this right with a grain of that. salt because Brad is not a lawyer. Yeah, <laughs> but okay. I mean, I'm not saying I don't believe you, but I'm just saying grain of salt here, just in case you're wrong, just in case. Um, so there was but, there there were multiple parts to this story. Um, they are that this is one of the most poorly communicated fuck oh, ups yeah. I think I've seen ever, ever, uh, ever. Uh, the part about Game Pass and subscription services for games. Uh, they were going to charge the publishers, the owners, the the Microsofts and Sonys of the world that offer those services for those games. And like, there's no fucking way Xbox or PlayStation are going to pay them for that because fuck that. Mm-hmm. They don't have to. They're an obligation. Um, mm-hmm. But how they track those metrics is that when you run a Unity game, when you install it for the first time, it installs the Uni- Unity uh, runtime installer and that does the internet connection typically that goes to Unity servers, and that's how they track the installs, and that's how they're going to use their metrics to charge developers. Um, but it, it's Weird. really fucked up. Jesus. Like, if you are an indie developer really and you put out a game for like five dollars, and then it turns into a viral sensation, you get royally fucked. Yes, absolutely. And, you know, there's a lot of high profile. I mean, I I also don't feel it. I think there's a lot of people who may not realize how prominent Unity has become, especially in like the indie scene. Like so many games these days are developed on Unity. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, one one of Brad's favorite games in the past several years, Slay the Spire, is a Unity game. Yep. Uh, You know, for me recently, the System Shock remake was it was a Unity game. Um, I mean, Darkest just, Dungeon. You start too? going. You, you start Hollow going Knight? down the list. You, yeah, Hollow Knight is developed in in Unity. I, so like, mm-hmm. I, I don't remember who it was because I saw it a few days ago, and this was also before they clarified like the limits and stuff. You know, they they didn't originally say there was a limit on how much you because it, 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 it's not an infinite number of money. They said that there will be a limit or something. I, once again, I'm not, I'm not fighting for them, uh, but some dev was saying that his free to play game that was made in Unity. Oh, I think it was like the Crab Game people, uh, the people who did Crab Game. Oh, they would essentially oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. if they had followed that with their install numbers, they would owe Unity like five million dollars oh, for a free to play game. Yeah. 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 Um, that's a hard pass. Um so as you might imagine, it's a debacle. Also, Persuade in chat says Genshin Impact, Hearthstone, mm-hmm. Hollow Knight Silk Song. You know, uh, a lot of people were kind of joking this week that oh, even though we're all quietly we're all anxiously waiting for an uh, an announcement or even a shadow drop of Hollow Knight Silk Song that they just secretly delayed the game another five to ten years so they could start <laughs> the game over from scratch. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just yeah. it's it's I, I it's would insane. not be shocked. If if developers, even if Unity reverts on this, just drop them completely. Anyway. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. No. yeah. Uh, there you know, there have uh, been multiple developers that put out statements that said, 
if this is not rescinded and reverted by the start date of January 1st, they will pull their games from sale. Yeah. Um, which would suck. Um, you know, and like the developer of the, the, the game Madison, that, I, that horror game I played last year, they said just out of just kind of out of print, they released a statement saying, you know, we more or less, I'm kind of paraphrasing here, but it sounds like they're they're like their intention is to just not use Unity more out of like. Oh, principle. my God. The whole indie horror scene is made in Unity. Yeah. Like it's an all... entire genre of games is going to just crumble. One of my favorite oh. genres of games. Yeah, yeah, it's fucking terrible. Also, um, also, I lied. I found I found the the thing, the tweet from the uh, the developer of Crab Game. He would have owed five point six million dollars. Oh, okay. God, you're <laughs> fucking liar. Um, but anyways, yeah, I just wanted to make sure we bring that up. It's fucking awful, and mm-hmm. we'll keep up with it and provide an update if anything of 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 note happens with it. Hopefully, that is a complete turnaround. Um, but yeah, people are pissed, and rightfully so. Um, other news I wanted to make sure we, we just kind of mentioned tonight. This is, a, this is a quick one, I suppose, but I wanted to make sure we, we, we talk about it a little bit. Um, uh, Hold on, real quick. Oh. Genshin Impact is made in Unity? Yeah. Is that yeah. true? I'm pretty sure it oh is. Oh my yeah. god. Somebody, somebody fact check me. Maybe somebody in chat. Yeah, but yeah, they're, I'm pretty they're sure saying it, is. it in chat, yeah. That's... Um, and yeah the, the other one that Persuade brought up is Pokemon Go. Oh my how, god. How many downloads does Pokemon Go have? Uh, <laughs> Hundreds of millions? Yeah, like I think Niniac has developed most of their games on Unity. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Niantic? Yeah. Niantic? <laughs> Niantic? What Niantic. is it called? Yeah. Niantic. Niantic. Okay. Um so shifting gears a little bit. This is a quick one, but I thought this near and dear to me, because one of my favorite games of the year so far is Star Wars Jedi Survivor. Stig Asmussen, the director of Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order and Star Wars Jedi Survivor from Respawn is leaving EA, which is weird. I mean, it's a, it's kind of a big deal because EA's acquisition of Respawn was 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 such a kind of a, a big deal, and Jedi Fallen Order has been kind of like unofficially being you know people are kind of like saying that game kind of reinvigorated Star Wars as a video game franchise. You know, like a lot of people were just really had soured on it, and that, that kind of like brought it back to life. Um, and then Jedi Survivor came out and was and was great. And he was just like within the last month or so was was doing interviews talking about how he kind of sees this as a trilogy of games and that there are pro- rumors are heavily swirling that they're already hard at work on the third game in the series. And then it's just kind of all of a sudden he's leaving but respawn and leaving all the AA. Time. Yeah, yeah, no, it does. Like obviously your first react my first reaction was, oh no. And then I was kinda like, eh, well how you I mean no game should be I mean, we do it all the time, inadvertently or you know whatever. But like, no game should be one hundred percent attributed to one person, obviously. Um, yeah. But he has been kind of the face of that franchise, of that IP. Or not yeah. Star Wars is an IP, but of Jedi Fallen Order and whatnot. Um, and it, it it does kind of suck to think that like this thing that he started is he's not going to see it through to the end. Um, but that well, doesn't you, mean you I'm think worried about, about it. This it. Way. You got to think about it this way. He has gone as far in his career as he can grow. This is the next logical step for him, for him to jump out of being a creative lead into an executive position. He needs to do happening? something, and he's not going to find that. Is he go- is he going into an going. executive position? Well, I think the I don't think he most said one way or the other what he's doing him is that he's going to go open his own studio. Well, <laughs> that, I mean that that's usually what happens in these situations. So that I, I wouldn't put that past him. It just kind of sucks because it sounds like as as of as recently as like a month ago, he sounded excited about the future of. And not saying him leaving means he's not excited about the future of the, of, of the property that he, st- that he started or whatever, but it sounded like he was excited to be a, a continued part of that <laughs> team or whatever. And now it's, just, it's kind of said, well? yeah. yeah, yeah, sold I, really well, yeah, really yeah. well. Um, I don't have, I mean, I don't and it was the numbers pretty me. cool. It was <laughs> pretty fucking cool, you know. And what still one of my highlights of the year for sure, for sure. Um, so you know. Feel? Kind of a bummer, but, you know, I'll be interested to see wh- wh- where he goes next and, and what happens next. And, uh, Maybe he's going back to Sony Santa Monica to do some more God of War. Perhaps he is. Um, I'm sure we'll find out about that sooner rather than later. Um, the other, and I, I completely forgot about this until I just looked at it on my notes because I added this. Like cause Again, we haven't recorded a show in two weeks, and I added this to my list. I completely forgot it happened. because This is the weirdest story of the week. Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines 2. 
was re-revealed, mm-hmm. re-announced as a game in development by the Chinese Room. Yep. Oh. I don't even, and it, <laughs> such a such a strange studio. Name. It is such a strange choice. I mean, I'm not. You know, I don't know how well, to feel I mean, about this it, because I mean, I it's like better games than the whatever Chinese it room. was before, which was like, right. Not even well, it, it, it was Hard Suit Labs previously. Um, well, I mean, well, clearly, 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 that that whatever iterate whatever Vampire the Masquerade Two Bloodlines looks like, or sorry, Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines Two looked like before, it was in trouble. It went quiet for a fucking long time. Um, so I think a lot of people were expecting it to be canceled or quietly canceled and just forgotten about. Um, but no, they've given development over entirely to the Chinese room. Yeah. I actually like games with the Chinese room, but they don't make games like. This really, I mean, Vampire the Masquerade is, you know, it, it's known for like freedom and and like it's kind of you know in not the same way, but like in some ways it's like Baldur's Gate, right? You have a lot of freedom in how you explore the world and who you talk to and where you go and how your characters shaped and all this stuff. And they're known for making, for lack of a better term, walking simulators. Like, I mean, uh, they did de- they did Dear Esther, right? Or my, uh, they did Dear Esther, that Amnesia, Dear Esther, the Pigs, Amnesia, yeah. Uh, I mean, it's Little just, Orpheus, everything, everybody's gone to the Rapture. Everyone's gone to the Rapture. It, maybe more, more so than anyone. Like you can look at everybody's gone to the Rapture and be like, this is a weird fit. Um, I mean, they, perhaps, team, but like if you're gonna make a game about a strong narrative with mm-hmm. very complex characters, like, I mean, no, I mean, on one worse. side. No, on one side, I'm excited. I mean, there's on... like combat. In, <laughs> yeah, in, that's uh, the part I'm worried about. Like, like they don't. Play. <laughs> also, also, don't forget they they also announced another game that's coming out early 2024. That's like a horror game on like an oil rig, which I'm actually pretty excited about. Um, it's just it's just it's just different. It's just not like <laughs> I'm worried about that part of it. Like Brad said, like all of, like the systems and mechanics that come with well, a they game like Vampire the Masquerade. The game, like they had a new trailer and kind of looked a little rough <laughs> but i guess that game's always looked a little rough i mean they're probably they know. probably are uh, inheriting they, a bunch of stuff I've, i have already. not been let myself get excited about this game since its announcement because i didn't trust any of it and, and you know does what? this help or is it help or hurt not, or not really do nothing? It does nothing? at least this is i mean no I, not really yeah I don't, I don't know how to feel about it but you know i don't I don't not like the Chinese room. So, you know what and I mean? I mean I'll, 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 we'll see I what happens. Like <laughs> I mean, that's yeah. fair. I mean, I can see let, why someone wouldn't Larian like Let Larian make a, make a fucking Vampire the Masquerade game. Let I mean, Larian make everything. Yeah, Larian I mean, make everything. Yeah, dude. I saw a thread on Era the other day that said, dude, what if Larian made a Final Fantasy CRPG? And I was like, this is absurd. And then I was like, Dude. Oh my god! <laughs> that was, that was amazing. You do realize we had this exact uh, conversation about if they made like a Star Wars RPG, like well, yeah, dude, I've been like, saying this just, shit for years. I mean, you can get many IP, and, and, it's, and we're hopeful. But like, I mean, you got to realize that like the decision by Paradox to shut down Hard Suit Labs' version of the game was back in 2021, and Chinese Room they either a were already attached to the project in some way, maybe as a support studio or something. Or B, Paradox was shopping around, moving the game to another studio, and they created a vision that Paradox liked. So, I mean, I, mean, I, I think you just got to give them a chance. They got to grow. If nothing else, I think this is exciting just because it's kind of like, I want to see what this thing looks like. I want to see what this thing is. It may be good, it may be bad, who the fuck knows, but it is genuinely interesting. I want to know mm. what's happening here. Um, mm. Okay, and now... Uh, there was a Nintendo Direct today and a PlayStation State of Play today. Again, as usual, I don't want to run down this giant fucking list. I just want to hit the highlights of stuff that happened, because otherwise we'd be here all night. Um, but, and I probably should have mentioned this before, I actually don't have the list in front of me. Just, oh I didn't even know God. it was happening today. I'm going to be honest. I'm I'm running on fumes today. I did not <laughs> sleep at all last night during that fucking storm. So I'm a little delirious, oh, and I probably should pull this up. <laughs> Wait, we got we got I mean, I, I can do some. I can do some of it from from memory. I, I, I got I got a list here, I guess. 
kind of a uh, no, I don't. Nintendo Direct games? Yeah, yeah no, yeah. I got it. I got, big it. I got it. I got it. I got it. Here. Mario, Donkey got it. Kong. Super yeah, Princess okay. Peach no, no, no. I'll start from the top. Yeah, we don't care. Well, we'll go in this order. We F zero ninety nine. F zero ninety nine is like not the return of F zero. That no, people, <laughs> but people like those ninety nine games. Some of them. Well, they like Tetris ninety nine. I don't well, know. Well, they it took is the just idea a lot of, of people the... racing at once, which is cool. well. No, they they took the idea yeah. of the battle mode from F zero sixty four and just made that into its own battle royale. Put ninety nine people in. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Cool. And it looks I like F Zero on the SNES. The sure, Super that's great. NES, so I don't know. I mean, I liked it. I like that F Zero. That's a classic art style, man. What that's do y'all cl- think about Princess Peach? Uh, what is it? Showtime. Showtime. Showtime? It's kind of cool. I've been on it. If it was this cool. year, it uh, it looks. It, it's got some puppeteer energy. I think. I mean, it's very like you know s- stage set. I mean, I like. Sure, uh, I guess puppeteer. I like energy, when she's. Like, Doing the swords woman thing. It, you know what it gets? It reminds me of like like Super Paper Mario or something. Like, like something, like it doesn't look like, like why can't the Peach game be like Mario Odyssey or something? Like a fucking legit ass platformer. This uh, is a little like. Uh, they seem hesitant to like let let any property other than Mario proper kind of like fill that fill that void that platformer like that well, pure, that's not pretty platformer true. void true there's like I mean, I'm, games I'm, and yoshi games and stuff i mean I, I, I just mean like it doesn't remind no it, it reminds me of puppeteer but but i'm saying like that whole like stage play thing they've been doing that ever since paper mario thousand year door i mean that's not the first i mean whatever it reminds okay Actually, hey paper mario since- thousand year door is getting a remake remaster you guys or? guys as someone who's really never nice. played a thousand year door i was watching this trailer that they showed today and the entire time i'm watching it i'm thinking to myself this looks like they're like oh they've made a sequel to the origami king why don't they just remake thousand year door i'd play that i had no idea i was watching thousand year door yeah. oh. <laughs> and then at the end i was like oh i feel dumb <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> it looks uh, uh really it looks good beautiful. I, I didn't see any like details about you know what they've added but you know they they did offer some details for the Mario RPG remake, which is coming sooner. Um, which, you know, they're adding like a couple of new things, you know, like you could do, you could do a uh, perfect timing means you damage the whole party, which wasn't in the original. I don't know if that's mm-hmm. going to make the game a little too easy. I mean, the game already was a little easy. I, I don't know, uh, but it looks nice and the music's good. And, you know, Mario RPG, I like it. You it's can also cool. do triple attacks instead of just double attacks. Like you could, could in the original. Um, and they've yeah. also added uh, the ability to switch between the new music and the original game's music. That's pretty which cool. Is, I, I always like when cool. you can do that shit. Yeah. Um, which on, a, pretty... on kind of a related note, I, since we're jumping around a little bit, they announced that Tomb Raider 1 through 3 remaster collection or whatever. Yeah. We're calling it. Oh, I guess it, I should it share has some like the, thoughts on that. It, ha- it has the Halo anniversary thing where you can switch back yeah, and forth. Yeah, here's the, the problem. The graphics. new heart isn't good enough to like switch back and forth. <laughs> It's like really kind of shabby. It's it's so, weird. So, so it's, it's like just it's like underneath PlayStation two levels of quality. But like, I mean, it's not barely good. better well, than it, one. So like they did some work to the models, right? I guess. Right. Which that's the only thing honestly looked on. a little weird. But, but then but the environments just almost look like a fucking emulator like smoothing. they just kind I mean, of smooth it, it, everything like, out you know what i mean which doesn't really work for like that the old blocky game it just makes it look weirder i think and honestly i don't trust the developer because they're kind of bad like who's bad. the developer aspire like they've made a lot oh, of shitty why, like, why Star you Wars like oh you mean stuff. the studio that was formerly <laughs> developing the uh knights of the old republic remake? yeah they were never actually gonna release that no one believed they could do that because they couldn't <laughs> even like port an old star wars game to a modern system without it running like shit i mean they've just you know i don't, I don't know. think that game here's a, here's officially here's canceled or anything yet That's there is no yeah it's coming. been canceled yeah or it's been moved <laughs> they said it's moved to another studio um the thing is, there's no like easy, modern, friendly way to like play these old classic Tomb Raider games, you know? Mm. And so it is nice for this to exist. I just hope they don't fuck it up. 
I think there's going to be like modern controls, quote unquote. I don't really know what that means. It can't be that modern for classic Tomb Raider to even work. Yeah. I mean, the whole world was built on like that very specific style of move. You know, it's, it's like it's like saying, you know, classic Prince of Persia classic, like the side scrolling, like cinematic platformer we've modernized the controls so like jumping is like easier like it doesn't work the game is built around a certain type of movement so i don't know what the fuck modern controls would even be it, it literally doesn't make sense to, for who me. knows um but uh, we'll see i'm probably just gonna play it with the old art because it's still 16 by 9 and like you know cleaned up but whatever right um do, do, are we interested in mario vs donkey kong it is. I mean, it's like in, a puzzle in, platformer. It's, it's I mean, a remake of a DS game. Yeah. Uh, is it, is it the DS game? one though, or is it the I, older one? It's the, the March of the oh. Minis. No, it's I not see. March of the Minis. March of the Minis was like a bad Lemmings. Uh, yeah, that's different. Or something. Okay. Like that. I think this is like a Game Boy Advance game, right? Yeah, Wasn't this it? is? I think it's a remake of the original Mario vs Donkey Kong, which is. I think better than kind of what that series became, but I don't know. It's obviously not a big deal. I will this say is one like, of those. The dude who leaked that last direct with Mario Wonder leaked like this direct and was mm-hmm. also right with this stuff. Um, so we did kind of know about this stuff. Mecca and chat says it's a remake of a GBA game. Yeah. yeah the original mm-hmm. one was on right. Game Boy Advance. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's see. They showed the new Prince of Persia again, but we've we've known about that. Uh, and that's coming. So soon, there's like so. a remake of the two another code games. Are you or Trace Memory? Are you familiar with Trace Memory? It I'm, like a, I'm like a very early DS game. I know David loves that shit. I remember talking where, about like, it. With you're David. solving puzzles. You're like a girl on an island, and you're like solving puzzles in a mystery. And and they they made like a sequel for the Wii, and it never got released here but so yeah. they're like remaking both of those and, and they're gonna that one's gonna coming out for the first time i mean they're like pretty cool games like that first one was was pretty short um but uh, it's kind of neat this was the ds slash we related remake that that was rumored um there's a new saga game which is exciting you're, um, you're dancing around the big one brad come on what's that Trumbo vanilla Jeff wear is coming to switch oh. no uh, i'd say um from the rest of this stuff, honestly, here, yeah, the big one, in my opinion, and I guess Chris Davis, apparently, is um, a new Vanillaware game. Uh, yeah. Which I thought was strange. Overlord, which is which is not a good name. What's the title Overlord. again? Y- Unicorn Overlord? Unicorn. <laughs> Pray unicorn, to your unicorn, unicorn Overlord. Unicorn Overlord? That can't be right. And it's about a magic ring called the Unicorn Ring or something? This something is, like that. This is a... <laughs> It's a, it's a, I don't it's understand. It looks cool, but I don't understand what I'm looking at when I see it. it like, it's an ogre battle game by way yeah. of Vanillaware, which is like fucking incredible because I love a ogre battle. And it's like actual, it looks like an actual ogre battle game. Remember the Symphony of War game I played last year, which was like ogre battle, yeah. like almost. It was definitely inspired by ogre battle, but like the the map, you know, traversal was more like a Fire Emblem game. This is like straight up an ogre battle style game where you're moving like your army and in, in real time looks kind of like semi RTS around a map capturing like, like, um, you know, like towns and stuff like that and stuff and, yeah. the, and then towns and stuff and then getting into battles and the battles I'm guessing are all like auto battling. But then when you go into battle, it's like cool vanilla wear art. It looks fucking beautiful, yeah. which is perf- perfect for this sort of thing where you're just sort of like watching, like the battles play out before you go back to the map. It's just, I fucking love Ogre Battle. And should like I to see it look like Fuck this. Yes, you should. <laughs> to see it look like this is, it's a, it's weird for Chris Davis to be excited because I know he likes 13 Sentinels a lot. I played it too. I really like that game a lot. But this is not like even, I mean, that's, there's no mechs, there's no schoolgirls, there's no like, it's not a fucking story game. Like, you know, you liked, this is just, you know, they, they've, they've made very different kinds of games before. It, you know? Vanilla yeah. is just and, one of those studios that I think anybody who has played and enjoyed one of their games, they just yeah. kind of like get excited for a, for a split second when oh, they see them make well, one with the art, but like, this is, is more so like, good. what's it called? Like grand Knights history or whatever. The, it's like, it's like, that it's like, for like Dragon it, Crown. It is, and then I was like, nah, it's not for me. What's well, a beat em up, right? Uh, yeah. And then like Odin Sphere is a very different kind of game. Like, right. Yeah. Wh- whatever. I played a lot of everybody has, games. everybody has like their, their games. I've played Ogre Battle. 
Everybody has their Vanillaware game. For me, it was Muramasa, the Demon Blade. You know what I mean? For me, it was Odin Sphere. I'm just telling you, I was just so blown away by their storytelling that they had with 13 Sentinels that anything they make from that point on, I want to play. Sure, okay. but you doesn't but matter also what other format it is. games have not really. I mean, like there's good storytelling in like Odin Sphere, but but you know, it was Thirteen Sentinels was almost like a visual novel. Like this ain't gonna be that. This is fucking brag game all over. I'm glad you're excited, Chris Davis, because you really like Thirteen Sentinels. But like me, this is like pff, you know, shot up to the top of my list for most anticipated. And it's coming out early next year. Um, early oh, early next year, starting to fill out. <laughs> March eighth <laughs> next year. Also, you know, like they're they're putting it out. Uh, their Atlas is Atlas is publishing, and Atlas is learning because this is launching on everything but PC. They'll get to PC eventually. They'll figure it out, but it's coming out and everything. On uh, and they're releasing a physical special edition that comes with a one hundred sixty three page art book, and I'm like, I need that. Do you I know, need that do pretty you know? Vanillaware art book. Chris Davis, I have a whole shelf full of art books that I thought I needed. And I do. I like them. I'm not, I don't regret spending the money on them. But I haven't looked through all through all of any of well, them. Well, that's you know your I mean? That's because they're on your shelf. They need to be on the shelf in your bathroom. Next they to your need toilet. to be like on a coffee table or... Yeah, maybe. Yeah, that's a good idea. Put a little bookshelf across from the toilet. <laughs> For all my art books, all my fancy art books. Um, Actually, not look at your phone while you're on the shitter. Like, read something. You could something. call them That's... your shirt books. Does anybody else feel like they've betrayed themselves when they, if they let themselves, like, go to the bathroom and sit down on the toilet and just, you know, okay, we're, we're here, we're starting, and then you realize you've left your phone somewhere else, and you're just like... No. no. I'm no. too busy in the bathroom. I don't have time to sit and <laughs> read I, stuff. We, we've got business to take care of, Nick, okay? Yeah. What business can you be possibly got, be doing without your phone? I got, okay, I got shit to do in there. Mind. <laughs> Unless I'm missing something. I mean, there wasn't too much new. Honestly, uh, um, but um, oh, from the there's Direct? definitely some things I'm kind of excited about here. So, well, um, well we also got Day the... of the Diver getting an October release date for Switch made my sure. wife very happy. Yeah. I mean, I know people have been wanting that. Yeah, on Switch, we also got a release date for Uden Chronicle Hundred Heroes. Oh, That's true. That's true. Yes. I mean, April twenty third, February. Oh, April. Yeah, yeah. I'm still, That's... you know, hopeful for that. I mean, I, I don't think it's like a sure like winner necessarily. We'll have to see, but I'm very excited to uh, find out. Yep, absolutely. Um, um, yeah, I think that's. I think that pretty much sums up kind of the the heavy hitters or uh, or like the, the more interesting things. Uh, I well, as far as what's not there, there's no Switch Two, right? No Which Switch, has been I mean, in the news. Nobody. They so weren't going to just announce. Metroid, they were going to announce yeah, a Nintendo okay, Direct and then happen. randomly. I mean, yeah. Shadow drop switch to no, no switch to no Metroid Prime 4, no Silk Song at this or the Sony thing. Well, yeah. they delayed it yeah, for another five great. years. Yeah, they, they gotta rebuild the game in something other than Unity. Okay. You say um, that, but a lot of indie devs have done that um yeah, no, over I the know. years just to like get shit running on the Switch because I feel like for a long time, like if you built your game in Unity, there it was not no easy port to switch. I th- still mm-hmm. think that's true. And when Switch blew up for indies, you've had a lot of like indie devs really have to like just completely port their game over from Unity. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, on a kind so of a related note, we, since you mentioned the Switch Two or whatever the fuck it's called, um, at Gamescom, they there was there's apparently reporting yeah. that they were showing Switch Two demos to mm-hmm. some De- developers, developers behind, behind closed doors. doors. Yeah. Yeah, uh, there was like a, there was a demonstration of I believe it was. Breath of the Wild, not Tears it was of Kingdom. Breath of the Wild, Breath correct, of the yeah. Wild, uh, Breath of the Wild, but really also, well at a higher resolution, higher frame rate. And, and mm-hmm. other, the other rumors were not just Breath of the Wild, but uh, Unreal Engine Five stuff. Like mm-hmm. they showed, like the Matrix demo. The they Matrix showed demo. a demo for Seven Remake, showing that running on the Switch too. Also, which, uh, NVIDIA DLSS, so that'll help. Of course, yeah. I mean, I think, I, I think at this point, it's. You know, we joke about it all the time, but I feel like 2024 is pretty... It's it's probably the year, right? That's The like year? That's oh, for Switch 2? Oh, yeah. yeah. It, it, oh, it's happening next it fall. Like... It's come hell or hot water. Yeah. Hell or hot You know, I, I saw a lot of people tweeting today after the Nintendo Direct. It was like, they are 100% holding back now for the Switch 2 because this was like scraping the bottom of the barrel for just like, here's the stuff we can release on the Switch now. And I, you know, I don't... 
I think that's a pretty pessimistic way to look at it, but I don't disagree yeah. with him. <laughs> I mean, you um, say that, but like I, this Nintendo Direct had a lot of good games. Oh, it's a lot of good stuff. It's you a lot know, of good it'll stuff. It'll be a I good can... kind of swan song period. But none Switch. of these games, none of these games are like, well, had that vibe of like, okay, I need to wait for a Switch 2 to play this, which is which is exactly why they're, re- you know, revealing them and announcing them now, um, which is fine. But I, you know, I think pretty soon, maybe early 2024, if not by the end of this year, maybe we'll have we'll see an announcement for the Switch 2. All right. Um, so the Sony State of Play, a lot less to talk about there. Uh, it was only like 25 minutes or so. And, you know, not a lot really of, of note to mention here. Um, hold on, let me pull up my list. Foam stars. They showed more foam stars. It's, oh, it's they Splatoon. opened with they opened with baby steps, which was actually a really yeah. hilarious trailer. But it was like, it's, what is that? I was it's like, this is quap. Quap. This is quap. Mm-hmm. But like in a different context, and you know, three D and whatnot. But like the the, it was really it was great. If you don't know what quap is, just go look it up. Q W O P. QWOP. Yeah. I mean, obviously that's not what this is, but it's, it's very, very similar. But like what made this great was like the dynamic commentary from the character as you're like trying to navigate the, uh, you know, trying to move your legs to walk up the, the stuff. And he's like, oh, that's a tree. And just like trying to like talk to himself. Like, so the commentary, I was I was that that worked for me. <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to play this game. It this looks is kind a... of infuriating, but. It's actually a collaboration between Bennett Foddy and the developers behind Ape Out. Mm, it's huh. Interesting combo, um, but still screams quap. Very good. Very funny. Very good trailer, I think. So check that out. Uh, Crispy, they announced a Ghostbusters VR game for PSVR 2. Yeah, called... I, I forgot that the state of play was today and I've just been seeing yeah. like little announcements all day like ooh, yeah. hell divers too ooh yeah, <laughs> hell divers too this uh, like ghostbusters here. thing not the a ghostbusters lot to report here yeah the ghostbusters thing looks fine i mean it's a multiplayer vr game so like yeah you know it has a shelf life of like what 6 months or something mm-hmm. like if that but yeah. i still kind of want to try it i mean it, honestly I, the thing that i, like, I, mean, I didn't the... like was the name and like the oh, the, yeah, the ghost that. lord thing that they're kind of like that's kind of like I, I, I don't know the ghost sword thing kind of looked cool i i, I kind of dug that i don't know it looked it looked cheesy and handy I mean, i'll tell you what it'd be um, fun to play is this locked to psvr2 or probably, probably. I, I mean it, i mean it'll probably come to like it's it'll probably come to to pc maybe quest or something like that uh it won't it more than likely won't be crossplay, but yeah yeah that kind of sucks because i would like to play it but I'm, you know, nobody else here has PSVR two, and I, I, I would only really be interested in playing it if I was playing it with like you guys or something. Um, I mean, you'll I, have to play with the other three people who bought a uh, PSVR two. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm sure there's three yeah. people out there. There are dozens of us. Um, they also so they gave a winter release date, showed the a little bit of Resident Evil four VR, which, if I recall, is a free update, right? It's mm-hmm. like if you have the game, it's just a free update. I'm I'm pretty positive it is. Well, yeah, I think I saw something hey, about that. You're hey, skipping out. Let you're me skipping on the question. most important thing, though. Hold on. I'm not. I'm not. I'm going to get there by asking this question. Who had the worst voice acting of the day? Was it Ada Wong, who's bad, or Sephiroth in Rebirth, who's also bad? Who's the worst voice? Go. Hmm. I, I don't know. They're both particularly monotone. They're both really bad. Really, really bad. Separate Ways is coming back, obviously, um, is what Chris Davis wanted to talk about. But um, I'm a little bummed because I don't like the new Ada. She's like, you know. Yeah. She has, nice she has a top ass for certain people. aspects there, bro. But like her, she's, it's bad. <laughs> I, I, well, I, I don't know. I didn't. I didn't find her bad, and I didn't really find the voice acting to be particularly offensive or anything. But you then again, we always that's we fine. always that's disagree on voice acting, so that's whatever. Oh, but you don't agree on. I mean, you agree with me here. <laughs> You're just not really. Nice. I mean, you say you, I, there was okay. nothing. I did it's not okay think we were going to be talking about voice acting when we got to this. No, tonight, we don't have to. But what about Sephiroth? You could dump on Sephiroth. I, mean, I don't actually don't know. I don't remember either. what he sounded like. <laughs> I think I need to go watch the trailer. <laughs> Terrible. I mean, maybe I that's a. Here's the thing. I'm watching the trailer right we, now. We always knew his speak. lines were going to be like this, right? But like, 
you know, there was no so voice acting. So the writing acting or the delivery? Him. Oh, both, both. You need to watch this shit again. You did watch these this footage. This I stuff. mean, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be honest. I don't, I don't know, man. I'm watching the trailer right now. That doesn't seem. I don't. Understand. Worse than any I, other Final Fantasy game. Um, <laughs> like, well, hold on, hold on. I, I can, oh. Nick. I'll, I'm gonna share you. Obviously, it's kind of hard to watch now because we're recording a podcast live over he has at like three lines Twitch TV slash Four Player Podcast. Um, but he has this one delivery mm-hmm. that's like super bad. It's at that timestamp. It's only he only talks for like five seconds. But like, it is such a bad delivery. Part time listening. No, basically that. Uh... Let's just listen to that real quick. Do not be deceived. Look, it's uh, so uh, bad. Okay. Like someone, someone was in a sound booth listening to him say that, and they were like, "Nailed it, man! Perfect." Dude, I want to be That's clear. Right. I no. want to be clear here. I want to be clear here. It is not like this, that. This is the worst voice acting of all time. But this is motherfucking Sephiroth, who's a legendary video game character and villain, like the guy. This is the guy, and this he, is his he, chance he, he to is be the, the guy. Dark in, in Final Fantasy version. 7. Like he he like at the time, yeah. yes, he was such a big deal. And in this, he's just like, I am Zephyr. Well, what did like, he sound it's... like in the first one? Was he I, I don't I mean he barely talked in that at all. He just sort of stood there and fought Cloud. Yeah. Okay. Uh well here's where I'm at right now, and uh, you know I don't know. I, I, I that, feel that, I'm not that, seeing that it. Incredible. I'm not I, seeing it. I mean, I'm ki- I'm kind of with Crispy here, but here's the thing. I, sh- I was watching that trailer today and watching people in chat lose their fucking mind and the Twitter was losing their mind about this trailer. And oh, the right, I think there's a it was an amazing trailer. I wish I felt something. I, 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 th- I no, no, no. I think it's because I feel betrayed, but I feel fundamentally I think I'm still healing from Final Fantasy 16, 16. a little bit. <laughs> I, I can't. I can't bring myself 16. to feel anything was, about Final you Fantasy. You guys right are now. so We've all... fucking weird about Final Fantasy. I swear to God, like <laughs> it was just kind of a mid-ass game. Who cares? Like, <laughs> no, I, no, no, no. You don't understand, Crispy. This is the like three mid-ass games in a row. You guys are so weird Dude, about I, your I, Final I Fantasy. We all left sixteen in the past. You were the one who who hurt yourself by finishing that fucking game. Nick. Look, this trailer for from today for Rebirth looked fucking amazing. It looked. It looks no, no, great. This, this is much more effective. Like I am like, you know what? Fuck Midgar. I didn't even like Midgar in the original game. That first game was cool. I'm glad we're out of Midgar because now I'm in all these like awesome memorable locations. God, this game and, like real nostalgia is kicking in and like there's chocobo right. racing and shit. You this know, trailer fucking... This trailer did what it needed to do and that it answered not really answered per se, but it, like it it's the response to everybody's question about like, well, you well, know, how good. much of the how much of Final Fantasy VII are they actually going to do, right? And they showed so like I was like, all of a sudden, there's Juno, there's Cosmo Canyon, there's the Gold Saucer, there's Weapon, there's a flying Chocobo. It's just like all of a sudden they were showing like, there was Golden a fucking, Saucer there was a, mini games. They were yeah, showing they were, like, they were showing the black Chocobo that was like like walking up a vertical fucking wall because that's yeah, what they basically the do is, in the Nick, in the base game. I feel like I like, never questioned that they would th- i always knew they were gonna go to like the key places from that original game my question was always like how that stuff was structured like you're not gonna hop in the that's, chinese that's bronco what, and drive this, over this didn't a go as map. far as it, this didn't go as far as it should have i still those questions are still there no i think those questions have been answered those questions what? were answered the first the first time they fucking showed rebirth you know uh, a year and a half ago or whenever the fuck that was it's gonna be big fucking areas and it's not going to be. It's not going to be I a gigantic continuous no open world. Vehicles. They're not going to do that. I bet I, there's going to be no I, vehicles. So here, here's there's the a thing, fucking Brad. segue in the trailer. What do you mean no vehicles? Okay. <laughs> so here, here's the thing. Here's the thing, Brad. Here's 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 my thought. There is not going to be a big open area where you're driving a vehicle. But I believe the time it will take you to exit an area and enter another one will be more time than it would be in the original game to drive to between those areas. I bet, sure, I bet you're just going to have like a fucking star map and you select places and you fast travel. But there is a vehicle there if you want to interact with it, but it doesn't do anything to the fucking game. I'm you know what it's talk, probably going to be? be more like Final Fantasy 16. I hate to say. Yeah, it. yeah. I was gonna say no. It's probably going to be exactly like Final Fantasy 16, where it's like big open Whoa. areas, and then you go to a map and you pick where you're going next, and it just you're there. 
because you well, still have I, to I create think the this... areas will be connected, but I guess they sort of were connected in 16. Um, the, yeah, but the good news is it's not going to be like, like horribly fucking boring like Final Fantasy 16 because Final Fantasy 7 is sick and the characters are sick. Did you see? You could play as Kate Sith or Kate yeah. Sheen. That shit was cool looking. Yeah, they showed Kate Vincent. Sheen. Yeah, like, let's show Vincent. Vincent popping out of the mm-hmm. fucking coffin. My God. Mm-hmm. This shit wasn't tingling your balls, Nick? What the fuck? It was. It was. But, okay. And I said and it I, wasn't. No, 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 no. Listen, listen to me. I, I can't really tell because I, I wasn't kidding earlier when I said I didn't sleep last night. I'm running on like two hours of sleep. I'm tired as fuck. And I can't tell if my lack of enthusiasm while watching this trailer was because I'm, I feel sleep deprived or if because I'm still feeling pissed off about kind of the general state of Final Fantasy right Literally now. Literally neither. I, what are you talking yeah. about? None of those make all, sense. <laughs> all, what do you, you asked me, you asked my, the question. I'm I trying know. to answer the I question for you. I, I don't know. I was watching this trailer and I felt like I should have been like losing my mind and I just wasn't. I was just watching a trailer. I I, I don't, I don't know what it, I don't feel. Did you watch it on your phone? The hype. <laughs> no. No, yeah. of course not. Mm-hmm. Hey, uh, uh, just, just to bring it up. We have so many games to talk about tonight. Y'all. Yeah, can we, we, we get back to the rest oh of state God. of play? Oh, we're we're an hour. Well, that's over. Mean, Let's we're, move on. We're from an hour into, into this podcast, and we've yet to talk about a single game we've played. February twenty oh we, We're talking about Starfield tonight. Let's just move on now. <laughs> Resio Four Separate okay. Ways DLC coming out next week. Oh, that's cool. Hey, I'll play yeah. that. Fuck yeah. yeah. Do you want to try and squeeze a game in real quick before we cut the break? Yeah, we could do my game real quick. That's not a thing long at all. Sure. Roll that beautiful footage, Chris Davis. Of, is it of what game, game Bradley? Pseudo Regalia. I played this game called Pseudo Regalia, I guess it's called. I don't know how to say it. Pseudo Regalia. Um, it sounds right. I it's Google image it. It's ugly. Where you play as this goat lady. Why did I play this game? I heard it came out earlier this year. I heard... I, Ever since I saw like footage of this game, all I the art's horny. Like, I can tell you that. Curious about it. It's not horny at all. No, no, no. I, I, when I was looking for images for like the background and shit for this podcast, all care. It was just oh, a bunch of fan art of this strange. of this goat lady in like. Well, yeah, because there's poses. no like real art. Uh, yeah, um, exactly. So, so this is a. So if you look at it, it kind of looks like an N64 game, which is great, right? But and it has the plat like the platforming. The platformer like tech of something like a Mario 64, like sort of like the the deep, like, you know, if you really want to go deep, you can really get into some of like the trickier tech, right? Like, you know, like the the like the backflip or the triangle jump and all, all that stuff, right? And it even right. goes so far where it's almost like Mario Odyssey-esque, right? Where you're really like stringing together like tricky tech to platform in the game and the game is a platformer but instead of like a a traditional like mascot platformer where you're collecting a bunch of shit this is like a metroidvania and the vibes i I was getting like playing this game was actually more like a castlevania 64 kind of thing which was just you know like an adventure game this is like a platformer like adventure game from like that era which is cool you know i was talking about that we were we're talking about uh games we want like uh spiritual we did like a top three spiritual successor yes. indie mm-hmm. games or whatever and i brought up classic tomb raider and, and i was kind of sad that indie developers don't seem like really as in love with that er- that era um and this seems like a game that is like this this is kind of what i was looking for a, a game that that is sort of in love with like platformers from like that early 3d era but but more in the vein of like tomb raider and less in the vein of like mario 64 you know, the mascot platformer, the collectathons, which, you know, ironically enough, it does sort of have that trickier platforming tech. And that really is the star here. It just feels so good to play. And, and the abilities you get, like the movement abilities you get, they're sort of like, you know, what you're, what you're getting as you explore this world, like Metroidvania style. Right. And, and it's just, it feels so good to play and it feels good to zoom around after the, the old, and I love the look of this game because it reminds me so much of that era. And the music even kind of reminds me of like a Castlevania 64 sort of situation. Um, but I love that it is not you, like you never see. I just you don't see games like this. Um, and it is like an open Metroidvania yeah. that's very open. So much so that like this is really easy to get lost. There's no map in this game. So it's really easy to get turned Man, around. Lot of that lost, going around but, but I was like super addicted to this game. I almost played the whole game in one day just because it felt so good to Jesus. move around. And I just, you know, 
I just fucking I've been craving a game like this. God damn it. Like they don't make shit like this. And you streamed uh, this the other day, didn't you? I, I streamed uh, like the end last of it, night. Right? Right? Like, I, like uh, I finished this game probably took me about eight hours. It, it would probably take you less if you don't get lost as much or if you're not really trying to like find everything. But I really, you know, really enjoy. I, I, I wanted a really. I was thinking a lot about like Baldur's Gate, like, oh, I should like put, grind away, chip away at Baldur's Gate, get back in the mines. Right. And which is, you know, not a funny way to I mean, a friendly way to think about it. But I, I when I uh, like a month or two ago when I played Viewfinder, which was, you know, like a pretty short right. six hour like indie game that was like really good, but it felt like a really good palate cleanser. And and I instead of like um, talking about yet another one of these big RPGs, you know, because I, I knew like y'all were playing Starfield and Sea of Stars and I knew I could like maybe play some of those, but I would never be able to play as much as like y'all did. So it's like, what am I going to contribute to that fucking conversation? I'm not going to start another big, enormous rpg that i'm not gonna be able to finish so i'm just gonna play Baldur's gate but then i was like i, I want i want i want another palate cleanser so so th- this game sort of like popped back in, into my head and i'm so glad i picked it up it was perfect i love when you can like see a game that seems like you don't really know much about it but immediately you know like oh this seems like like my lane you know, and you just you, oh, yeah. you get it almost immediately from looking at a trailer, and you know, like it's maybe not a lot of other people's lanes, but you know it's yours, and, and you you put it in your mind of like, oh, I should I should play that, but then you know, I, I I could have easily like never thought about this game ever again, but I'm glad it sort of like popped back into my mind. Is this a recent release? It. Uh, it came out. No, this uh, came out in 1997, Nick. <laughs> it came out earlier this year. Um, it's cool, and I finished it. It's it's just a really really cool game, and uh, pseudo regalia six bucks by the way. Oh, that's nice. what it was, right? I've been wanting to play so- B- Bomb Rush Cyberpunk so badly, mm. but it's forty fucking dollars, and yeah. I cannot <laughs> afford a forty dollar indie game right now. So I was like, well, this one's six dollars, and I've been wanting to play this too. So I'm gonna <laughs> get this one. Well, there you um, go. And so it I finished out. it. So. Now I'm now back to Zelda and uh, Breath of the. Now you I mean, finished uh, two games. Zelda and Baldur's Gate, which is um, you know, yeah. What I'm. Uh, no. Yeah. I feel you. I feel you. All right, so let's take a quick break. Uh, when we come back, I want to. I want. I want to talk about. I want to give Starfield uh, its due here. We're gonna Nolan and Crispy have started Starfield, so we'll talk a little bit about that. Um, obviously, I think we'll go into more depth on that game over time. Um, but I definitely want to get first impressions out because it's, you know, new hotness. And then we'll talk a little bit of Sea of Stars, maybe a little bit of Texas Chainsaw Massacre because we did end up streaming that together last oh, week God, instead of recording yeah. a podcast. We don't, I mean, we'll we'll see how time allows on that one because if, you know, if we're I mean, pushing it, we'll, we'll save it for next I've week. I've played like 20 hours of that game. Oh, oh my gosh. God, no. Wow. You always it. do this. You always do this. <laughs> Every fucking game night is all like, oh, it's pretty cool, pretty cool. No one really, no one watching seems to give a shit. This is cool. Uh, but whatever. Hey, I didn't immediately uninstall Nolan just it because I had a good time. I, and I was like, like I, I don't need you people. <laughs> Every time he does this. Well, I, Nolan's okay, a we'll, we'll, we'll get into it. We'll get into yeah, it. Yeah, we'll get into it. So if you're watching us live or listening at home, don't go anywhere. We'll be, be back after this quick break. Welcome back to the show. Um, so, you know, Starfield is here. Starfield is out. It's in the wild. And How much uh, has I everybody like played? I have not touched it yet. Do you think so, you're going to touch it at all? Yeah, of That's course not. Why would, I'm why? at about five hours. I plan on going... Chris Davis? Very hard in that game. I'm not touching it until the back half of October. Oh, Probably shit. November. So this is a Crispy and Nolan combo. What it you, is crispy. Well, I guess I, I played an hour and a half or something. Well, crispy said earlier he's like 30 hours into it or something. 30 Damn. hours. Yeah. All right, well, yeah. Why don't we start there then? Uh, since you, you know, no one's only like five or six hours into it. Right. So mm-hmm. let's start with you, crispy. You you've played the most. So well, what's uh, what's the vibe? Oh, by the way, since we didn't mention it, fantasy critic wise reviews are out. It's sitting at like Whoa. a. 86 no? or something 86 that it's down to an 86 it's been creeping down dude Eurogamer put out their review today and oh so it's euro press which we knew 
it was going to be bad because so sloppy. it's worse than Mortal Kombat One. <laughs> um, I mean, not probably, everything right? in this world can be Mortal Kombat One. Game. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, I, I, before we like get into it, I just want to say my thoughts about this game are very complicated, and I'm still yeah, parsing. Yeah, you hated this game before I'm it came still, out, right? I didn't hate this game. Oh. Yeah, okay. Brad, don't let Brad we're, touch we're, this. Don't let him touch this. Again, Continue. complicated. I, I'm i not... I really like Fallout 3. I really like Skyrim. I really like Morrowind. Morrowind's the first game uh, from Bethesda that I ever tried, right? Right. Um, It's been years and years since I played it. I played it when it was on the original Xbox in high school. Really fun. Um... I have a lot of positivity for those games. I don't have a lot of positivity for the studio itself, especially the leadership of the studio. I just don't really like their. Are we their... talking about Todd? We're talking about Todd. We're talking about Pete Hines. We're talking oh, about Pete like, sucks, yeah, yeah I, I don't like I don't like their attitude about gaming press. I don't like their attitude about monetization of their games. I don't like I don't like a lot of their stuff right right um so it's it's kind of complicated now when this game came out i was kind of like this isn't doing anything for me right i was kind of like nick watching the final fantasy 7 rebirth trailer like no soul I, just dead completely inside. i feel nothing <laughs> i feel nothing it's it's not like a super interesting concept at the moment to me when they started showing off the game it became more interesting because of the idea of like the no man's sky esqueness of it, right? Like right. the idea of like having a ship flying to different planets, exploring, blah blah blah. So it sounds really cool. And I will say that I think the ship stuff, like the ship stuff mechanics, yeah. I'm gonna need you to elaborate everything on the ship to, stuff. Everything to do with the ship is like the best and worst part about this game. To me. And worst. And worst. I I really like the ship customization. I like building ships. That is like what I've been doing for a lot of that 30 hours is ship building. And like, I I've just been doing quests to get money to buy more ship parts. And that kind of cuts both ways where it's like, wow, the ship building's really like fun and engaging. And it, despite the fact that the menus are God awful, yeah. um, once I figured it out, I'm like, okay, this is really fun. And I really like building ships. I, I love I love like walking around my ship and being like, oh yeah, I got it all laid out just the way I want. Like, oh here's the crew quarters and here's the mess hall and I'll climb up this ladder to go up to the bridge and fly my ship. Right, love that. I also think that the ship really only matters as much as you want it to. You can play this mm -hmm. game with like a minimum of activity on the ship, like, mm -hmm. and that seems like the hugest fucking misstep in the fucking world like like the amount of time like i can't like the amount of like extra clicks and extra thought that has to go into traveling from one planet to another if i want to like see my ship or touch it at all is ridiculous when like i can just open the menu go to a planet i want to go to as long as it's within hyperdrive range click on a place on that planet that i've already been to and then just like automatically fast travel right right it seems crazy to me that the ship is so relegated like that like that's supposed to be the thing right that was supposed to be the thing that made this more than just fallout right yeah it was fallout yeah. in space because you go to different planets on a spaceship and do stuff right like right so for the ship to just be this like mini game it's almost like the fucking like the I don't know, like, I, I feel like it's the Sunshine Club in Yakuza 0, where it's like, wow, this is a really cool oh. minigame, but I don't have to do it if I don't want to, you know? Like, it's the never-ending quest to appeal to as many people as fucking possible, I when mean, they should have so, just doubled down yeah, on it. Yeah, so it's really... My, my thought is, my thought on this is, is they probably originally required you to go back to the, the spaceport and get on your ship to leave a planet that probably at some point in development, that's how you did it. But I think they probably got a decent amount of negative feedback being yeah. like, Oh, I wish I could just I, fast travel period. And I then don't... they went with that because I think it would be a lot better 
if you were forced to go but like i understand to an extent as well because like oh well it's, like well, how, how do you force someone to interact with the ship well you make time pass when they're going between planets that people wouldn't like that and so like i i i agree with you that you can use the ship as little or as much as you want um and still get by so far i've been enjoying my time on my ship um i i do like interacting with it i do like kind of going between like the rooms i like the workbench that's in there i kind of i it almost makes me feel like i think of subnautica Obviously, you spend a little more time in your vessel there because you're required to, because you're physically having to move from place to place. Exactly the opposite of what I feel. Hold on, so that's what I'm saying. So the thing is, the the main reason you're on your ship in Subnautica is to get air, um, and then from travel to place to place. The problem is, I understand that they can't really make you fly between planets in this. You know, like they can't look like make you do it. I don't know. I don't know what the design philosophy behind the decisions they've made are like, I don't really understand who they're afraid of losing with this. Um, it's a space exploration game that has a minimum of space and exploration. And, yeah. and that's just, I that's just a space sucks. exploration game. I don't think it is a space exploration game. Mm, I don't, I'm I don't, that's I'm really fine. Confused. It's not a space exploration game, but that's exactly like what they're pushing, like with it's the marketing for the space game. with a spaceship because it's fallout in space. Wait, can we it's, clarify something real quick? Yeah. So it's just what, fallout. Yes. So like, up, I Nick? don't fucking like, What's okay, up, fallout's what, great. What exactly do you mean by minimal exploration? Because it, I it mean, is it. Think of this. Don't explore think of, space. think of space in this game as the castle in Mario 64 and all the planets are the pictures you go into. You don't really spend a whole lot of time in space. You're spending all your time on the planets there, themselves, there are... doing a few things and then going back to hub planets, getting quests, doing things. But you're not actually in space itself. Gameplay almost incentivizes you to not go into space if you can avoid it. So, like, like, like loading into like space and then landing on a planet is so much more cumbersome than just like fast traveling somewhere. And I. I have to test this because I'm not entirely sure. Maybe somebody knows the answer. But like, for instance, sometimes when you go into settled systems, like when you go into a system that's controlled by the Free Star Collective or by the UC, who are the two big like governments in the game, uh, there are patrol ships that scan your cargo for contraband, right? Mm-hmm. I don't think they do that if you just fast travel to the planet. They just put you on the planet and move your ship there. And now you've snuck contraband onto the planet without having to do the whole. That can't be right. I don't. I don't know. I, I like. I, I've you never can't, once you, you fast, fast traveled travel to a planet. You've I've never, never been fast to traveled to a world. You can't fast travel to a planet you've never been to before. But you're going back and forth between a lot of different uh, places that you have already contraband. been. And every time you show up in a system, they scan you for contraband. I've never seen any indication when I fast traveled to a planet that does that that I had to pass some kind of scan to get there. Like, it is the weirdest fucking thing. I don't know. Somebody really should just, like, talk to me about... Or, like, tell me <laughs> if, if they know that, like, well, you know what that's happening. The shipbuilding stuff kind of reminds me of the base building stuff from Fallout 4, which you also didn't really need to engage with. It was just, like, this whole other well, thing. Well, yeah, like, and then remember when I said that, like, this is basically just player housing, and you were like, well, I'm not player housing. Was, you do more than that. And it's like, if you want... Well, I guess like half of the interaction if you choose to sure you can go get into combat you can't. like some of the some some like so some so mission on. lines let's let's talk okay. about that okay. combat I don't let's talk about the How's combat real quick so so that's the other thing i was going to bring up and so a game that crispy and i like rebel galaxy um mm-hmm. has you in a ship uh, you can't really customize it but you can buy different ships and you can do a little bit to them but you can literally get in your ship and f- set a destination and fly to that planet. It takes a little bit of time, um, but you can get boosters and get there, blah, blah, blah. Uh, In Starfield, when you are in space around a planet, you could point a direction, put your thrusters on, and go for a thousand years and never actually move anywhere. The space around a planet is a finite area um, that has sometimes a few ships in it, uh, but that's it. Like You can't actually go anywhere. You can aim your ship at the planet 
put on your thrusters and go for a thousand hours and you would never get any closer to the planet. You can't actually do that. I saw, like I saw a video. A... No, no, no. I saw a video. Where somebody tested that out where they flew at a planet. It took them seven hours to get to the planet. And oh, then when they got that. there, it just put them inside the model of the planet. Like the game clearly was not intending. Yeah. Like when you were in space, you look at a planet, you hit your like contextual select button, and then you get a thing that says, bring up planetary map. It, it, you know, so now I've hit like four keys to bring up this plan. It, it is pure role play. Like I brought yeah. up the planetary map when I could have just done that like two minutes ago in three load screens ago to achieve the exact same thing. And like nothing about the game has changed. Nothing about my experience with the game has really changed. I haven't like flown my ship at all because even when I'm in the ship, like interacting with the planet, I'm not like flying it. I'm just aiming it at a planet and telling it go you know, here. Like I want to say like like. So, you know, you you opened by saying, oh, I like all these other Bethesda games. And I do, too. Mostly Elder Scrolls games, right? But one you thing that all those games have in common that this one doesn't is that they're like exploration games because you're exploring one single space. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You can in, walk in, in a direction Skyrim. and see shit. And yeah. you can't do that here because the planets in space it's so big, it can't be designed that it's way. It's really so, fucking so, weird so you too can't how, walk like, around. It like, like like the I cities, the cities also have that. Like it took me a minute to even like realize this, and when I realized, it, I was like, "Whoa, this is fucking weird." The cities are kind of like like when you go into a city, you go into like a load screen to get into a city, and then there's like fast travel points in the city. It's very like like old like like going to a fucking city in Skyrim or going to a city in Fallout Four, but then you can just like leave the city like you can jump over the buildings and just like run out into the distance and you're in the planet like like it's more open than the game even like frames it as a being you know mm. but running around on a planet is not fun to do. it's nothing you to do resources. it's like it's like you run in a few you run in a direction and you find like oh an abandoned factory or you find a, a settlement or you find an automated farm or you find this or that and then it's it's just it's fallout spread out over like a longer more boring distance and i don't this okay. is supposed to be a, sp a space exploration game and I, I i do not accept the premise that it's not because that is exactly like what they were selling it on and in that regard fails horribly I just huh, don't. Yeah. I I think this is about as good as Fallout Four. So if you liked Fallout Four, you'll probably really like this. But those Me, are very different. Played, you can get I, something from Fallout Four that you can't get here, though. Sure. And sure. That, that is like exploring a wasteland is sure. exciting. Okay. Okay. Because so, but, but, but you can build a ship here, and that's kind of cool. You know. Okay, so, so like, there's other kind of cool stuff to replace that. But like, it, it doesn't make any goddamn. Like, I don't understand this game i don't understand why it's doing what it's doing i don't understand what it's trying to be i don't really know like where they were coming from with this i don't understand why they had this like really good idea this like whole deep system that actually if you choose to engage with it does open up a lot of like really fun gameplay stuff like 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 doing pirate shit like i've, I've started doing like the pirate quest line like i heard that's really it's really fun. And, and like the way I got into it was really fun because like I flew to a planet and I was like, oh, fuck, I've got contraband in my cargo hold and I forgot about it. And then I got tagged by a patrol ship and they're like, you have contraband and we're arresting you and we're taking you to the UC Vigilant to see this captain who wants to talk to you. And I'm like, OK, just don't fucking shoot me. So they end up taking me to a flagship. And then like when I get there, they're like, all right, you're a criminal, so you're going to work for us. Or we're going to throw you in jail. And the like what they want you to do is infiltrate the pirate gang. So like that's how I got into the whole pirate uh, quest line. And it was like really fucking cool and like emergent. And it was like, wow, that's great. And that's the only thing like that I've experienced in 30 hours. And I, that's like, like a guild quest line, though, right? Like that's is, the most memorable shit from like all modern it Bethesda is. games. Modern-ish Bethesda games are these guild quest lines, right? Yeah. And then, Question. and then, like at the end, you have to like choose between whether or not you're gonna help the UC take down the pirates, or you're gonna side with the pirates and betray the UC. And you get like different rewards and stuff for doing either thing. And it's really, really fun and cool, and just like kind of separate from like everything else. I don't know. Like I, I and like, like I'm 30 hours 
into the game, and I am absolutely certain that I have not seen everything this game has to offer, but, like, the yes, drive... Right. The dr- <laughs> Yes, I do, and it doesn't fucking matter. Like, I forget that I have magic powers. Like, it's so weird. Like, it's what, so weird. Powers? Yes! The whole, like, main storyline of the game is finding these artifacts that, like, eventually start giving you powers. And you're like, oh, I can just reverse gravity in a room. But, like... It... <laughs> NASA punk my ass. Like, what are you talking about? Like, it's, okay, I don't okay, know. Okay, like, okay. Let me write, <laughs> let's write it in for a second. Let's write it in for a second because I, I am genuinely perplexed here a little bit. I, and, I, 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 I <laughs> no, 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 no. I get it. I get it. And, and this is not me trying to like downplay your 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 thoughts on this. I'm just trying to figure it out myself as someone who's never played the game, who is just kind of seeing and watching the reaction to it, and is also very excited to play it. I just didn't, like, I haven't started it yet because I didn't want to throw another RPG on the fucking pile while I'm playing Sea of Stars and Baldur's Gate. So, I'm watching people play it. I'm watch- I'm seeing kind of a wide range of reactions to it, which we all kind of saw coming, but I haven't really seen a lot of just, like, outright negativity, which is what I was expecting about oh, the game. I mean... I've heard the crispy take a lot, actually. I mean, no, 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 I'm not... But okay. my, I'm not outright negative about the game. No, no, what I, I was going to say is that I think a big problem with the game is timing. Like, I think it mm-hmm. came out this year, and that sucks. Um, because in All 2023, it's just kind of like a mid-RPG. If, it had co- if this game had come out 10 years ago, we would still be talking about it. You know what I mean? Like, if this game had come out when Skyrim came out, like, this would have changed gaming. But... You know, whether or not that was even possible back then. Like, I I do feel like there's some cool ideas and there's some cool, like, it's just that, like, it does a lot of different things that I've seen elsewhere that was done better elsewhere. You know what I mean? There's a lot of space games out there, and it's not just No Man's Sky. Games that aren't don't go quite go as far as No Man's Sky that still do space better than this. Yeah. And, And when I say, like, I've heard a lot of crispy's take elsewhere i'm not saying i've heard a lot of negativity elsewhere but i've heard a lot of frustrations over how everything is like very menu driven fast travel driven that you know everything like the space stuff feels so unneeded or disparate or whatever like i'm hearing that a lot from a lot of different people so i just think that some people put more value in like say that crimson fleet quest line right versus like i mean i'm also seeing a lot of people putting as a a lot of games I'm seeing a lot of people talk about I've seen a lot of people who are having a great time with it and saying, like, I've barely touched the story at all. I've seen people who are saying that, like, they've done they've been focusing mainly on story and kind of following the, the like letting the game pull you through the experience in a spe- in a particular way and having a great time that way. And and I'm I guess I'm sitting here trying to anticipate what kind of experience I'm going to have as someone who doesn't even who like. I don't really fast travel in games, period. Am I going to enjoy this? No, I'm serious. This is a serious yeah, question. Am I going to enjoy well, this here's game the thing, Nick. Here's because the thing. I already do that kind of thing? Maybe, but like, I also don't find the fast travel like super intuitive. Like, I, mean, I, 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 I don't think it's fun traveling around either way. But Because the map hmm. sucks. Yeah, the map just kind of sucks. Um, and like the number of different like button presses you need to do anything that are just like i don't know why i had to hit that last button to hit this button but whatever like it's just weird and hmm. yeah, it's not just the space thing that's kind of getting me down like the the other area that i feel a little like meh about is like the companion characters which sucks i'm like I'm coming off Baldur's Gate 3. I'm coming off of, like, the greatest the cast of companion characters, like, since, I don't know, fucking, like, Knights of the Old Republic. Like, like amazing cast of characters whom I love as a group and as individual characters. And now I'm, like, stuck with a bunch of nerds in Constellation whose names I can't even remember. And half of them kind of suck. Like, just aren't cool like this mateo guy fucking sucks he's so lame the fucking the the stroud eklund ceo who's like part of he fucking sucks and is lame like the robot sucks and is lame like, like they all but just shit they all just the suck game has lame. never been bioware you no. know what yeah, this the characters all the characters in the crimson fleet 
quest line are kind of cool. Like, all the pirates yeah. you meet are like, ah, oh, you guys are cool. I wish I could just be a pirate and not be in Constellation, because those guys are lame. Like, Man, I, I don't know. fucking sucks. I, like, this is, I mean, honestly, I was kind of dreading this. I mean, I'm, I'm really I, excited to play this game. Dude, I'm, I'm, I've put I three hours in, and I'm not done yet. Like, I'm not done. I'm going to go back. I'm probably going to play some after the show tonight. Like, there's fun to be had. It just feels more like a make-your-own-fun kind of game. I mean, you know? Yeah. It's also a like, shooter. I mean, we It's a shooter, it, and but, the but... shooting stuff, yeah, if you want to get into that, the shooting stuff is probably the best that they've ever done. And, and it's I will the say best for Bethesda, yeah. For Bethesda. That's what I mean. It's probably the best Bethesda's ever gotten with, like, shooting combat. That stuff's tight like it feels decent to play you know and I, w- I will say nick that like crispy's been leading this entire conversation and he is a big space fiction enthusiast so like he's got some i'm not, I'm not saying yeah, he's got no, some no, extreme no. opinions no, but i've got some baggage maybe like i've got some expectations that maybe you're not gonna have like like maybe maybe the way you feel about this is the way i feel about final fantasy 7 where you guys are like oh no his voice is a little off. I've been waiting 30 years for this. Well, like what I'm saying up. is <laughs> what I said is that what Crispy's take is not only not uh, like it is not only one that I've heard like a lot before, but it's one that has sort of scared me off from trying the game. Even though it's on Game Pass and I did have I to play for a couple so hours, but like no that's the kind of stuff is on I, Game don't, Pass. I okay. don't want to hear because to me, the best part of a Bethesda game studios is sort of wandering in a direction organically organic exploration and mm. it doesn't work like that no. here i hate games that are built around fast travel i don't walk everywhere like you nick but i just sort of i do sort of accept it but i rather you know this cool space game for me is outer wilds right because you can hop in your ship and fly anywhere you want yeah 100 percent. yeah yeah this this ain't Look, that. I'm, like i'm looking at and stuff that's right here and, and the I stuff you were saying planets, in one system, the stuff you were saying, yeah, that like before launch, if it was like one star system and they just really went for it, would have been an infinitely better game than what this is. I feel like, but okay. so there's fun to be had here. It's not a terrible game. I do think, I do think part of the negativity is just the timing. Like this is just not the year to be like limping in, you know. And I feel like this is a little bit of a limp, like. <laughs> I, I don't that's know. Fair. That's so, fair. To to close out my opinions on the game, I'm once again only five hours in. Um, there are some things I do like and some things I don't. Um, I liked it better in like No Man's Sky when you could go to a planet and you could literally just do a loop around the planet. And while maybe there was not an infinite number of things to see, there was still something it felt like every once in a while. Whereas in this, it literally feels like when you land on the planet and you pull up the map and there's those three or four points, literally that's really the only stuff on the planet you can interact with. Um, when um, you're in a city, one of the the frustrations I've been having, and maybe this gets mitigated later on, I don't know. Um, but like, I really wish I didn't have a stamina bar when I'm in a city. Um, because it just promotes fast travel because the fact that I move Mm, so that I I think it's an interesting concept in this that the 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 running is based on your own breathing if you run too much you start building up co2 and if your co2 gets too high you start losing health whatever that's fine so you have to stop running every once in a while to let that co2 reduce and regain some oxygen but when I'm in a big city like dude just fucking let me run okay well I'm just gonna fast travel then because I don't feel like um you know Dealing sprinting for 10 and, yeah. seconds and then having to walk for like 20 seconds and it's really like it, it gets frustrating and so the other problem that though with that is is if you saw earlier in the footage when i pulled up the the city map it's just a couple of like tr- oh. like diamonds on like a blue thing like i don't even know what the fucking city looks like Dude, the, like, maps, why do the, I... the maps like one of the most common the map, complaints. Like the map yeah. doesn't have any features yeah whatsoever. there's nothing like, on it yeah. and so it's like i don't feel like i know this city like, I, yeah. I don't feel even though I've been there for, you know, an hour, I've spent running around between places. I don't have like a grasp of what the layout is. I know what white run looks like, like the back of my hand. Yeah. Um, but yeah. that's a because I, it, I could physically run around it. For a map. It's uh, not well, the main cities, though. No, 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 the main cities are handcrafted. And, and they have they did come out in this this past week and say that they've already kind of mapped out their first like major patch for the game and they're working on improved maps which has been one of the most prominent complaints about the game since launch and since its early access period people have been bitching about the maps uh rightfully so so not to mention the kind eat of a, button for food 
I get the eat button for food. I think like, you know, and I'm a little, you know, I'm a little tired of the No Man's Sky comparison as much as anybody else, but I do find it to be apt. So I will say one more thing in that com- comparison in that, like, if this was a game that like someone was going to put out and then like continually update and develop and and and, you know, tinker with. It could become a an amazing, amazing video game. Well, it, it I, I, like I don't no know that I have. I don't know that I have the faith that Bethesda is that kind of studio. I there's right. too much stuff in this game that feels like modern day Bethesda, where it's like, oh, okay, yeah, you you designed your little your little uh, your your fucking skill tree to have little patches so you can sell those patches in your store, and like you, you're gonna sell this and you're gonna sell that. It's like they're gonna get their money and run. I feel like. But there, I don't know. there is no modern day Bethesda. I guess I don't know. This it, is it. This is whatever Bethesda is. is, right? Like half of the design choices in this game are like, yeah, that'll make great merchandising. Like, no. I I don't know. Yeah, maybe I'm a little overly cynical about Bethesda, but I just this. I've heard, I've is heard the like, story kind of delivers, and like I'm this wondering is if maybe like eighty percent of the way there. The story, I I don't know. <laughs> maybe I'm maybe just, later. I'm just trying to figure out if I'm gonna like if I'm gonna like really let myself. You know, I kind of ignore think, the main I, path. I, I, I hate so that idea, though, of it, like... I really don't see Nick clicking with this. I hate that idea, though, of, like, rely on the modding community. Bethesda will just put out whatever because the people will make it better. Because, like... I don't know, like... Maybe In just have, like... Maybe just have a fucking... Be. Just make it a fucking... Just have an artistic vision for once in your goddamn life. And, and, and put that out. You know what I mean? Like, instead of this just, like bullshit try to appease to everybody thing you like know, how do you feel about like the optimism I, this is what carlos told me he's like i like that it's not very cynical it's very optimistic oh i don't know what no it's not like this doesn't give me like star trek vibes if that's what you're saying it just gives me like oh space vibes <laughs> like <laughs> <laughs> like, like it's uh, it's so it okay. okay. As a take, All right, noted. Take. I'll write that down. Okay, <laughs> we, we need to move on. We're gonna revisit this game uh, multiple times. I'm I'm sure. Uh, and Most I do. Most of the people I've met in this game are cops, and I hate them. Like, is is kind of how I feel. Crispy <laughs> like... hates space cops. Okay. Um. All right. We're gonna. We're, I'm hoping that I get through Sea of Stars early this weekend, so I can spend a lot of time with this game before we we talk about it next but we'll see what happens mm. um so Thank with you. that said i do want to talk a little bit about sea of stars because i have now played quite a bit more than i had and than i had last time actually i don't even think i had started last time chris uh, chris davis had started it i know you chris davis you finished the game at this point right i have rolled credits and i will finish it tomorrow what? Okay, I don't know what that means but whatever oh, okay optional shit i also i want you to be careful chris davis because i do feel like i I feel like there's stuff to spoil here with this game, and I don't oh, want you to do that. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, just in terms of, like, you know, the messenger had kind of a big thing, and I feel like that shit got spoiled for me. Is this game sick? Pretty. This game's, <laughs> this game's, pre- uh, this game's pretty cool. Um, I, I, I've actually got a little bit of, like, Starfield-y... Uh-oh. I've got Starfield-y um, kind of talk about this. Like... People have seemed very excited, but now that I see more people playing it, and they're kind of like, "Oh, well, it's nice." Well, no, I, I, I do think there is something to kind of what Crispy was saying about Starfield, and that the timing may just be. I mean, honestly, any RPG that These comes out games, within it, these are the no, 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 I know, but any any RPG that comes out in the same like three to four month period around Baldur's Gate three is just going to have a rough going of it. And I know these are completely different kinds of RPGs, and that's totally fair. In fact, Sea of Stars is very different from Starfield, which is very different from Baldur's Gate. Yeah. But everything is inevitably going to be compared to Baldur's Gate right now because it just it's one like it's just honestly one of the best made RPGs I think ever made at this point. So it's it's just kind of it's it's a rough go. But obviously, this is going for something very different than those games. This is a um, classical JRPG by comparison. That's a CRPG. Like it's. Yes, completely. I mean, th- this is this is this is very much trying to kind of um, appeal to people who miss the days of you know playing games like you know when Radio always talks about Chrono Trigger. I've been mean, talking about this game. 
because there is Mario RPG and Mario yeah. RPG. Sure. And those are both very apt comparisons, especially now that I've played a lot more of it. I've spent more time with the combat system. And you ask if this game is sick, Brad. Uh, and the thing is, when you, when you talk about an RPG being sick, it's very different than when I say an RPG is sick, right? It's just we look for very different things in RPGs. Um, you look for a lot of crunch, I think, in your RPGs. And yeah, I, sure. I mean, I we all love Chrono Trigger, though. That's not that wasn't a very deep game. I mean, really. Sure. Sure. And I don't know how this is going. I think a lot of that kind of hinges upon how you feel about characters and story and stuff when it all is said and done. And I don't know how I really feel about these characters outside. I, I think the one character that is kind of like instantly appealing to me is Garl. <laughs> um, just because he's such a he's just he's just a fun. Happy just a happy guy. He, happy he's, guy. He's your best and he, friend and he's so happy to be going and having adventures with you. He's uh, yeah, he's happy to be in an adventure with his best pals. And his best pals are the two main characters of the game. Oh, how I feel about them. I you know, it could go one way or the other. They're fine. Um and I but like the world is like as you kind of explore and the story continues and whatnot, the world becomes more interesting over time. You start to kind of see the conflicts, you start to see kind of like the bigger picture of what's happening here. And there's some pretty clever little moments like twisty surprising exciting moments which which you know really cool but i think i i i'm kind of somewhere like kind of like i'm i think i'm like three-fourths of the way through the second act um i feel like i'm waiting for the other shoe to drop because i know there's i know something's coming um and i think the game has been kind of subtly teasing something that's gonna happen i don't know what that is but i'm it's there i think there are clues to be found throughout throughout the game um but uh, what I really love about this game is just kind of how well it it, it captures the, the spirit of something like Chrono Trigger and the way it I think this is like one of the most beautiful world maps I've seen in an RPG in a long time. Um, it makes me miss the days of like it made me think about it's not exactly the same, but it makes me think about like it has that magic of like running around an open map like in like for me, it's like Final Fantasy nine which is not exactly the same as what it is here, but you kind of get that magic when you go into the world map and you just kind of see how it's stylized and the cameras pull back. And, and this game is beautiful because you can see the clouds and birds and the, the, the world's kind of moving and alive and that, that all that shit's really well done. Um, I mean, like yeah. the, the, yeah. the, the best moment I think for the early half of the game is when it, when act one ends and you, when the world opens up yeah. and you can just start to see what's on the map and yeah. you just, I just, I just spent like 20 minutes just going all over the map going, Oh, what is that? Oh, what is that? Ooh, yeah. There's a lot I of like, Ooh, I'm going to, I'm eventually going to get here. I just, I can't, I can't do it yet. So, and I, I can't remember. I think we may have talked about this last time, but like maybe one of the, the more disappointing things to me about this game. And this is where I talk about, you know, maybe not having the crunch, right? Is that the way you learn abilities in this game is 100% tied to story progression. Absolutely. Basically. Well, you, mostly. Um, yeah, I mean, you can find certain abilities that are hidden in the world by doing some, your due diligence and exploring and, yeah. and whatnot, but you don't unlock abilities by, like, unlocking things in a skill tree or, you know, using points or whatever. It's just, like, you progress yeah. to a point that give you this ability. So combat kind of gets more you know yeah, complex i mean sure like which you know not super crunchy but like the actual act of being in battle is pretty fun and addicting um i will say there's a little i mean especially early on when you don't have a ton of abilities at your disposal it can get kind of repetitive but the, as they add more characters and they start adding new combo abilities and magic spells and then you eventually get the ability to manipulate like the time of day it's it's it's, it's a good it's combat cool. system I mean, it's yes. I think it's a good combat system. I think it's a simple combat system. It's, but it's, can I ask has, you? Can I ask you the all important question? Because I always, I, I feel like, I think of like Mario and Luigi games, right? Which this right. is obviously inspired by, and or Mario RPG and stuff. And like, they're super clever. And like, oh, these cool timing mechanics and these neat animations and stuff. But the thing I run into, or the, or the question I ask myself is, am I excited every time I get into a fight? And if the answer is no, something went wrong. And so my question for you is, I know you can get into the nitty gritty of the mechanics. I know there's some cool stuff. Um, 
are you excited to get into a fight? In every game? single time? Yeah, every single time. Like in a Tales game, I run into a battle. because I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm going to be honest, Brad. I don't think I've ever played a game where I'm excited about to get into a fight every single time. With the exception of maybe Baldur's Gate 3. You should <laughs> play like some Grandia or some shit. Or, I think that's an I incredibly mean, high bar. Like I mean, my I favorite mean, game of all, one of my favorite games of all time, Final Fantasy IX. If I'd be lying to you if I told you I wasn't annoyed by getting yeah, into combat. One of the weakest parts of that game is the battle system. But like Final Fantasy, there's I don't like Final Fantasy just in general. Prior to maybe Final Fantasy XIII, I feel it was just like one of my the high bars for me as far as video game franchises go. But I have never played a Final Fantasy game where I was excited every single time I got into combat. Okay, no but, matter how good it was. So so but that's why you liked game. Final Fantasy. So. I do. Okay. I mean, I, I'll, I'll say I mean, that I, I, I think don't. You're, I mean, my qu- you're kind of sort of dodging the question by saying yes. You know, I am dodging the question by being very. Oh, I just lost. General, Brad. My question is, where are you on that scale? I'm here. I'm a back. My question is, Sorry. where are you on that scale? Um, what is it? If ten is whatever Grandia, what is? I am more excited. I, I I am more excited getting into combat now than I was the first like four or five hours of the game because the first four or five hours of the game, you're pretty limited in terms of what you, I mean, kind of like the, 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 like the thing that it does, that's really interesting is how it kind of communicates uh, turn order and incoming attacks to you, which is that mm-hmm. and if, if an enemy is about to do a special attack that could potentially do a lot of damage to you, it gives you a, like a, like a, uh, like a slot machine type thing. And you can cancel out the attack before it hit, if before it, uses it if you can cancel out all of those slots if you can slots, do, deal that type of damage to the enemy in those slots it'll give you like you two clear blades them all out. and two yeah. things of poison so you have to do two swipes with a blade and deliver two attacks that do poison damage if you do that it'll cancel out the attack and you won't be able to use it and, and you can also do there's also certain attacks that you can use that will delay so if it says they're about to use a special attack in two turns you, there's one character that can use an ability that pushes the, the turn order back. So it's like suddenly you have four chances to cancel it out instead of two before it uses that attack. Yeah. So it does some clever things. Not to mention like when you when you get later into the game, when you start getting more than three characters, you can start mm-hmm. swapping them out freely in yeah. battle constantly. So you can plan out like your, your strategy for canceling out the enemy attacks and knowing when to manipulate the turn order to your benefit. You can also use your grapple hook to like, in, like initiate a, like do a, a an attack prior to actually engaging in combat which will give you the orbs that you can absorb to improve your attack damage right right from the start yeah which is you know it's it's clever like they put i do think they've put a lot of thought into it um and i get it and but you the, know what the, the combat in mario and luigi is really clever but i get really sick of getting into fights right and and I don't want to say that I've gotten really sick of getting into fights. There are times when I'm like kind of focused on one thing I want to accomplish, one thing I want to do, and I'm not really in the mood to like get distracted by combat. Well, I mean, here, here's, um, here's what I'll Is I'll there say. like experimentation in combat, or you pretty much do the thing until it's over? I, I mean, mean there's are, how, how, how much I think choice, are, are you making interesting choices in combat? I think so, but I, I also think that there is probably better, more efficient ways of of being successful in combat than I have figured out. Like what? sometimes they throw enemies at you that are going to do like a special attack in like one turn or two turns. And I'm like, I don't see a path forward that will allow me to cancel it out, but I'm almost sure it exists. I just don't know. I don't know the best way. I'm not the most efficient at this. So I know I'm not going to be able to cancel that out before. Chris uses Davis, the what are you, what's your take on combat? Like, I, so this is a very, this is designed to be kind of a chill game. If you want it to be chill, like, this game does not force you to grind to uh, level up. You will get to your max... There, As far as I can tell, there's no max level, theoretically. But you never have to worry about being at a level threshold in order to fight a boss or progress in the game. Um, mm-hmm. So You're naturally going to kind of reach those. Is this an easy game? Out. I No, it, it is not no, an easy actually, game. I've I have, died quite a few times. Okay. Good. Yeah. But it, it's... It, but, in, in that regard, it's also very forgiving if you choose to enable it. Like, there's a whole system in this game about relics. Like, you've been seeing in this footage how whenever Nick does a, 
uh, attempted block or, or an attack. There'll be like this multicolor like star that shoots, shoots out of them. That's a relic that indicates to you how accurate you are in timing your, your strikes and your parries. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of things like that built into the game that can modify the experience. Uh, I mean, there's there are things I can point to that are actually kind of cool that I think you would be interested in that really modify the combat experience. But for the sake of everyone who's here that will probably play, but a lot of them are in the it. interest of making a lot of them are in the interest of making the game easier and less focus on combat. I think. But, which but is, that being you know, said, fine. there's also more later in the game that make it harder. So right. you can okay. really craft it to you kind of. I heard the what dungeon design's do. pretty strong in this D- game. Right? Dungeon design's great. I, I mean, yeah. you know, it's it's fun. They're bigger than I was expecting. They're just navigating and kind of figuring out the puzzles, which are you know, they're pretty easy to grasp and, they, and like they have a lot of good to character out, to but them. They, but they have like you know when you do things in these dungeons, it's like okay, this is clever. I'm having a good time. It's it's a it's like a chill RPG that has some a few moments of surprise difficulty spikes. Um, and, you know, I don't know. I haven't finished this game yet. I'll talk about it more when I'm done hmm. with it. But Is the combat more, more fun than Chain Echoes? I think, is this a trap or not? I can't Damn. Tell. This is... No, it's a trap. It's a trap. No, I, I, I think Chain Echoes is better. It's not a fucking trap. I haven't played either of these fucking... I think Chain Echoes has better combat. I mean, here's the thing. Chain Echoes is, I think, without a doubt, the deeper RPG experience. Like yeah, if you if you want if you want a crunchier RPG that's going to be more demanding of you, I mean, the player, Chrono Trigger is beloved, but like compared to even RPGs out at the time, like it's not like a deep, right, complex game. I mean, right. I'm I'm just saying, and I don't think I'm not trying sitting here trying to say Chain Echoes is the better game or the better combat system. I just think it's different, and it does have mechs. It does have mechs. It does have mechs. Um. I, I, I don't know. I will I, say I, I, that it's not even a fair comparison, really. <laughs> there's I mean, we're talking a lot about combat here, but we're not talking about like the the exploration, the great presentation, the that? excellent music like it's good. It's there there is, exploration. There's good. a me. lot to find, uh, a lot of side content that is really cool. Uh, side quests that uh, put a very large smile on my face uh, as well as main progression that made me smile even more. Like this game makes me so happy. It's funny. Play the it. game's funny. Yeah, it's funny. Charming. It's got, it's got char- very charming. Uh, it is, there's not a single customer. In this. It is so <laughs> nice wow. to have. Yeah. <laughs> what does that mean? Is that on there's, your metric there's not of quality? A customer in this game? Like nobody <laughs> <Like> language. <laughs> it's a good game. It's, it's a it's clean just game. Like reading a like a old copy it's a of Boys Life magazine. It's the kind it's, of game you could take home to meet your mom. It's you know, it, it's family friendly. It's 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 nice. It's just it's it a nice. nice. I don't disagree. Character. I don't thing. disagree. Okay. Is there any voice acting? No. No. One hundred percent text. Yeah. I know. <laughs> We've lost Brad. We've lost Brad. He's out. Abort. Okay. Um, it's like 35 minutes of text through a conversation. Like no, it's, it's all pretty, it, it hits it's the beats, it nice hits the character's that. notes, it says exactly what it needs to do, and it moves on. And it's got some pretty great like little story moments that are, that have genuinely been like surprising and vignettes. Uh, little vignettes. Yeah. Like yeah, yeah. like Nick uh, is Nick. Oh, Nick right I now didn't is know exploring. this game had like I didn't know those game had like fully like animated cutscenes every once in a while. Yeah. Which is a, and they're like they're beautiful. <laughs> like I yeah. was like I wasn't expecting any of the stuff. Like the presentation of this game is on point. I love it. There's, there's also so. fully animated like attacks too later in the game. Like there's there is so much that you have not seen in this game that I am so glad that none of it was in the marketing material. How long and is this also, game? Like thirty. I think it's like thirty hours. To roll credits, it's thirty hours to get. The full experience, it's about another seven hours beyond that. Motherfucker. Hmm. Okay, I wanted to finish this game on, like, Saturday. I was going to super happen. pretty, because I, I, I feel like it's super pretty. It is super pretty. Big thing. It is super pretty, but the, no, the like, character like You always say that, story... like, 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 it can be super pretty. Like, that's allowed. It's allowed to be super pretty, but also yeah, be know. a good game and have good systems and Why mechanics and stuff. Why can't Crystal Project be su- this pretty? <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> well, we're not talking about Crystal Project. We're talking about Sea of Stars. This is this is it's happening though, right? 
like with this vanillaware game i'm getting the really pretty brag game finally okay. finally you can stop playing those uggo games that you always play well, okay simply. chris davis I, th- I do think we need to move on by the time we talk about this again, I will have finished. Do y'all so recommend this? Is this like yeah. a strong recommend? It's also on Game Pass, dude. Go no, I, I don't. This is on Game Pass and PlayStation Plus. Why is um, Crispy and Nolan not playing? That's my question. Because they're playing uh, Starfield. You and, and Baldur's Gate. They're playing that too. <laughs> and Baldur's like, Gate. And I'm still playing Armored Core. And that game yeah. is too. sick as Brad, hell. Brad, Brad is purposely just trying to massacre this conversation. Yes. I mean, I'm not. But that is the role Brad plays on this podcast, pretty much. Okay, yeah, I mean, guys, that's, that's, this is this might be my game of the year. Fifteen years, this shit ain't new. This this might <laughs> be my game of the year. I'm putting it out there right now. What? Like, okay, well Wait, you, didn't, you didn't see that have a conversation like you're you're just played your game of the year in 2023. Well, you were you talking to Nick for 95 percent of it about fucking combat. Well, Nick was mostly talking about the talk. I was just hey, to be questions. fair. To be fair, Chris Davis, you did talk about this last time. This is my That's first true. opportunity That's to true. talk about this. Game. I, just yeah. I, I talked about it for having played it for about four hours. I played That's 37 fault, hours sir. now. That's your fault. <laughs> Immortals of Avium. Oh man. Okay. That's my four player. All right. Let's move on. What else we got? Okay. Chris. All right. No one. Sorry. So last, I, I don't know how much you want to say about this, but Nolan apparently has gone balls deep on the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. <laughs> well, we also, well, I tried to transition to it earlier, but everyone just ignored me. Oh, what was your transition? Oh, he said massive transition. I said Brad's oh, trying to massacre this conversation. No one fucking noticed. I'm so noticed. sorry. <laughs> okay, Brad um, was the whole conversation. Mm-hmm. Brad was trying to shove blood down your throat, yeah. Nick. So we, by the we way, played that game last week. Let's talk about it for a second. Last week, uh, four of us played this game, yes. um, and we had a fairly bad time. Hey, I had a great yeah. time. I mean, we yeah, didn't know what we were doing. For what it's worth. So he, here's the thing. And I made a joke during the stream that I was like, oh, don't worry, guys. We're actually just playing tonight as practice for tomorrow when we actually play. And then we kind of joked about, hey, let's actually play tomorrow night. And then everyone bailed 10 minutes before. So I actually ended up streaming it Friday evening and I played with Scotch. Uh, Scotch? No. Scotch? I was pretty clear about my requirements. Scotch. 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 Uh, Hold on. I'm I'm having having a mini stroke. Um, (laughs) Sonji made up that name. Sonji. Sonji. (laughs) I'm having. (laughs) I thought you were talking about somebody else. Long time community oh member Sonji is Scott. I apologize, I apologize to Sonji. Um, it's one of those things. There he is. So oh, Sonji was now. was delightful. Uh, and hey, I got it out on my own before anyone had to. Play. Gotcha. Um, so uh, Sonji and I played for like what four hours, five, yeah, uh, uh, so uh, quite a long time. Friday evening, and uh-huh. I think we had I think we had a great time, um, because we kind of knew a little bit more what was going on. Um, We uh, understood a little bit better how the skill tree system worked um, because I am trying to figure that out. It's it's a little, it's, it was a little convoluted. Um, And then we learned the maps a little bit better. And so I think the problem is, is we booted up the game, right? And then we started a stream and there's like 12 tutorial videos um, and we didn't watch like any of them, really. We watched like one. There's no time. Uh, exactly. You're like, oh, I just want to play the game. I don't want to like, what are you going to make me watch this tutorial for? Um, and I think the problem is the game suffers from, I would, you know, liken it to like Monster Hunter, where there is so much information. If unless you have someone holding your hand and kind of guiding you a little bit at first, you're just overwhelmed. Right. Yeah. And so I think we were very much overwhelmed uh, when we first played, we didn't know what was going on. We didn't really understand the mechanics. We kind of understood the goal, but not really. Um, and then I think after that kind of four or whatever session, and then again on Friday, we started getting into a groove. Uh, me and Zonji were like winning several times. Um, and it, it's one of those things where you really just kind of have to understand the fact that there is a skill tree that's kind of buried. Um, it's kind of silly, but when you level up in this game, you get skill points that are just like a generic big pool. Everyone shares all the different characters share this one pool of skill points. It's nice because at any point in time you can respec. Um, but the the problem with that is um, 
you, you have a limited amount of time. Um, so like, say you, you've queued up with some random people while everyone's like, hey, let's play, let's play. You're like, well, crap, everyone, they chose the character that I put all my skill points into. And so now oh, I'm stuck no. with this character who has no skill points. So now I have to respec, which takes like, you can probably do it quickly in like a minute and a half, two minutes, but everyone's like bitching at you in the chat because you're not ready to go. Um, I don't really like that. I wish like for some reason, I, I don't know. I, I wish you could share the skills instead of having to respect, but anyway, yeah. that's besides the point. So you spend those skills, um, you unlock um, new abilities and then you can attach them to your character stuff like, Oh, you pick locks faster or, Oh, um, the first time um, you pick a lock and you make noise or you do something that makes noise, that noise is just completely negated. Some super helpful abilities and skills that when you first start, you don't have, um and it's it's what's up nick i'm sorry i just i love the first thing i see i watch you do in this footage is your classic trip trick of oh no this killer's chasing me i better go find a well and jump yep. down to the well which we did like a hundred times that's just what you have to do yeah no so it is and so so what i will say is is you know it, it's tough when you're playing with random people um and this is a prime example i think i was playing with maybe some newer people or something because when they started, my teammates immediately started making noise, woke up, woke up grandpa super early. When grandpa wakes up, the killers who are up top can now come into the basement uh, until he's awake. They don't they can't. They literally can't get into the basement. So you're only, you know, fighting well, except leather for face. leatherface. Yeah. Well, that's well, what I'm saying. It's four V one um, at the beginning, in theory. But then as soon as. Um, grandpa wakes up in theory both of the killers from up top can come down now it's 3v4 in a very you know small area it's spot and yeah. that's what happened in this case and that's why i died super quick um even though i actually do prefer playing the victim over the family uh i find that it's almost easier um because when you are the victim uh all you have to do is hide until the coast is clear and then go do something versus when you're the the family, the killers, you're constantly thinking, oh, they're about to escape. They're about to escape. I have to I have to move. I have to go. I have to go They're They're escaping because um, you don't really know. And so, um, like I said, a lot of those abilities that you unlock, those skills, they really do end up helping. Um, well, when you put points into your attributes like proficiency and stealth, like, holy crap, you can break out of your shackles at the beginning super quick. Uh, you can pick locks way faster. Um, a lot of things that really just kind of help move the game uh, quicker when you're the the victim. When you're the family, you also have some really helpful skills. You have skills that will help out each other. Like when you attack a, a, a victim, it will show up for everyone else. Uh, or skills that boost the power of like the grandpa, you know, the, the guy yeah. who sits there who can't really do anything, but when you boost his power, um, he can help you find uh, the, the victims. And once again, I think this game kind of suffers from it's hard to play with random people because you really want everyone to have skills that complement each other. Um, and if you aren't in those communications, it's harder to do. Um, uh, an example of the the match I'm about to play, um, I just happened to queue up on a random one. I got Leatherface. Uh, I don't know if, if anyone happened to catch my Leatherface was level zero uh, because I had specced all of my points into a, a victim and I did not have time to respec here. Um, so I was like, whatever, I'll go in with a level zero um, uh, Leatherface. Um, so I'm in the basement, right? You'll see here in a, in a little bit. I'm in the basement. I'm chasing the people, whatever, blah, blah, blah. The entire time, none of my fellow family members are feeding grandpa any blood like the entire time and it's like that's one of the main things they need to be doing is boosting him i guess you can't feed right. him until he wakes up but as soon as he wakes up they should have immediately had a bunch of blood ready to go to feed him so he can start leveling up so he can start finding the victims they don't do that at all um that being said there needs to when be you're cohesion in, on your team yeah, when you're in a chat and even when it was just me and, and sonji the other day just one other person makes it so much easier to communicate and talk and figure out what's going on and plan. Um, and it's so much more fun when you, when you do that, um, yeah, kind of understanding the mechanics. Uh, I, I would definitely be down to do another community night to play this. I want to. Um, and I, I, I would be, you know, more than willing to help others out to kind of at least pass on the skills I've learned. You know, one of the things I've learned that when you're Leatherface, anytime you see any kind of barricade, take it down because it makes, it helps out the other, um yeah. uh, uh family Killers. members yeah. yeah uh yeah sonji did mute his mic for a while on accident or was that me that <laughs> muted mine i can't remember one of us muted our mics for a little while um 
So the communication uh, was, was no. I think no, that was me. I'm sorry, Sonja. I'm blaming you for for sh- shit I did. Um, I accidentally muted my mic and I was like talking and I was like, Sonja, why aren't you helping me? Uh, and it's because my mic was muted. Um, wah, wah. You know, yeah. uh, one thing I, but, I, I will say about this game. First of all, I am down to play this game again, and perhaps if we've planned ahead of time enough, I will watch some of those tutorial videos that I didn't make time for last time. Um, cause I bet there's some pretty My helpful tips there. Problem is I, I don't want to play with randos. I wanted to get seven people from our community, including us. Otherwise I, I don't. <laughs> so I think, I think it either needs to be three people playing as the family together or four people playing as the victims. Cause like I said, the problem is when, when you're playing a private match, um, you don't earn any of those uh, skills and you really want, you don't have to have everyone max, but you want a, at least a subset of skills so that when you go and change into a different match, maybe you switch between family and victims, you can at least respect and have that one person ha- have a, have a, have a set of skills going um, yeah. because it really does make a difference um, in how you play. Like it, it is, I would not say I would not be I, it, like, it's a, like from a level zero out of a hundred, like even like five, 15 skill points takes you from like a zero to like a 40 or a 50 like that first few things really elevates you super high um and so i think that's one of the things we suffered from was that we were all starting and we almost we played like what one or two matches uh public and then we immediately went into private matches so we never really unlocked any skills for our characters yeah um one thing I will say, I don't, one thing I, I think I can maybe add to this is just on a on a very general broad level, I didn't know what to expect from this game because you know, um, I didn't really play Dead by Daylight at all. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I, think we played, I think we played a few matches when that first yeah. came out, um, just to get an idea of it. And I know it's kind I of played taken some. off since then. It's gotten crazy, um, but I was kind of I was just kind of surprised. Like I was like. The kind of the beauty of Dead by Daylight is they, you know, it's pulling from so many pieces, like pieces of the source material. There's a lot of freedom to kind of like make a really uh, broad kind of experience here. And I was like, how sure. can they kind of duplicate that when they're only pulling from one thing, which is, of course, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Um, but I was pretty impressed by like the way they've kind of balanced this game. I mean, and mm-hmm. it's not perfect. Um, and you know, it only has a handful of maps. I would, I would like to see more, but like the complexity of those maps is impressive. Um, Mm -hmm. just some of the scenarios we ended up in last time when we were like playing the family and we're trying to help each other find the killers. And I was like, Oh my God, this place is a fucking maze. But like, and and it gives you those moments that kind of like call back to the movies in really creative ways. Like when you're slamming like the big heavy metal doors and stuff, I think everybody Mm -hmm. has those flashbacks to Leatherface slamming the big metal door. It's just like, (laughs) it's almost (laughs) kind of corny. Like how, (laughs) <laughs> it's how they work because that's an iconic movie moment. But, yeah, I know, but, but it works. <laughs> and the whole grandpa yeah. thing, I think is really interesting. I honestly yeah. can't remember. Is grandpa an element in that first movie that I've just completely forgotten about? Do I need to rewatch the Texas chainsaw massacre? Or did they make that up remember. for the game? I don't fucking, I don't fucking know, but it's clever and it works. And also surprisingly beautiful game. <laughs> Like, I didn't, yeah, it, definitely, like, it definitely looks good for what it is. Beautiful anything, for a like, sicko like you. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I yeah, you're right. Absolutely. I just was not expecting it to be quite as you know nice looking as it is. But um, I don't know. Chainsaw I'm down to play look, more. I wait. What does this chainsaw look kind of tiny? I mean, he's yeah, the, the large one, yeah. fella. He's the large. Yeah. Fella. So this is a little baby chainsaw. A little bit. I mean, maybe. Hey, it gets the job the done. Chainsaws. It gets the job done. It's not the size yeah. that matters. But man, some yeah. of those moments we had when we were streaming together, where it's like Grandpa's awake and he's like, call, he's like yelling, and you're just like, everybody stay mm-hmm. still. And then it's just like that, like no. And then when you when you realize you've been found or like someone's on to you, it's just like kind of panic so, inducing. I don't know. It's and, good. And it's that's good. the other thing that I've kind of noticed the more I started playing is the tall grass for the the victims oh crap it makes a huge difference like yeah. when you're the the family and you're chasing like you get kind of tunnel vision and you will be surprised how easily you'll just run right past someone um, yeah. or it also makes a difference because i, I can't remember for everyone else but especially leatherface his fov is a lot smaller 
Um, yeah. So especially when you're in those tight corridors, if as a as a victim, if you hang a corner and just like quickly hide behind a box, Leatherface will run right past you. Yeah. Uh, he will not see when he turns the corner. Um, and so, it, it, like I said, I think the, the reason we suffered as much as we did that first night is this game is not a game you can get good at or have fun with in like an hour. You got to you got to play for, you know five six hours and then that's when it really starts to sink its teeth in and when you start understanding the mechanics in the game it, yeah. it, i mean it um, would also help like if the game actually had proper matchmaking like balancing. that's true too yeah and maybe the player I think that's also a lack of players be just because it's a little bit newer too yeah yeah and the but people yeah, who do for, like it, it like really like it so they play a whole lot so yeah i would like to try, like brad said i would like to try and do another community night where we actually try and secure a full I guess we need what seven people. Seven people. Total? Yeah. Yeah. We need to f- secure us plus whoever, whoever of us is going to play pl- plus enough community members to fill out the whole thing and just kind of do that all night. Um, yeah. I'm, I think that'd be a great time. Okay. For sure. Let's go ahead and wrap it up with the four player minute, guys. We've made it. We've we've reached the end. Um, Brad, would you like to start us off? Oh yeah, sure. Um, Quickly. Shit. <laughs> well. Damn, I wasn't ready to go first. I, I, I can You're go. always first. Oh, okay, fine. Nolan. Nolan's going to go first. Nolan, give you a minute. Yeah, cool. Uh, so my four-player minute starts now. Um, I have been playing another game. Um, it is uh, my my hype. Um, it, Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, the Teal Mask DLC came out. Oh, it did. Um, okay. And yeah, so I, I started playing that. Uh, I've really been enjoying it. Uh, I did re kind of pick up the game uh, a few weeks before um, because uh, they put out a, um, a, a code for a free Mew. Um, and then if you put it, you got that Mew. And then they have every, you know, they rotate these raids in the game that are like super, super powerful. And this current one is a super, super powerful Mewtwo. Uh, which is very difficult to take down down without collaboration. But if you bring that particular, if you bring in a Mew, um, you'll get like bonuses and you get like a special like mark on the Mew. Anyway, um, been enjoying that. Um, my my God, and this goes to my my fuck you. Um, my entire wealth for a crumb of frames in that game. Um, it runs so fucking bad. Ooh. Um, like. It, it, there there will like it like i would not it's not a stretch to say oftentimes there will be minutes of time where it's running like around 20 frames a second uh 18 Ooh. frames a second it, it chugs uh sometimes and it um it's it's frustrating and i don't know if they're just waiting for the switch to um uh, to, you know they so i will say i will say they did with this DLC put out a patch uh, that does fix some things. Uh, one of the, the, the problems of the game is when you go in the, your box and you look at all your Pokemon, cause you're doing it a lot more now than you used to. Cause you're kind of swapping them in and out. That's a whole lot smoother. Everything loads faster. That's nice. Uh, but the actual frame rate of the game itself um, is, is very sad. Um, mm. Yeah. Uh, so then my, my, uh, my other, uh, my fuck you, um, I guess goes to myself. Um, the other week, um, I was mowing my yard and I guess some we had some temporary fencing because it's like a new area. And when they pulled up that temporary fencing, I guess maybe they also pulled up a rock uh, and I hit it with my lawnmower and like fucked it. It Like mm-hmm. I, I'm talking like a rock the size of like a like a softball, like a grapefruit, like a huge rock that I just did not see because I had already cleaned all the rocks out of my yard. So I assumed there would not be a rock there. Uh, that was dumb of me. Um, and so that's a kind of a headache and a half trying to deal with getting that fixed. Uh, meanwhile, my grass just keeps growing because unlike Texas, we've been getting a shit ton of rain here. Um, hey, we, got, a, we, in, we, had, in, we got our first rainstorm last night. It rained night. Yeah. like all day today. I, I heard about that. Well, um, well did, did it like destroy your blades or like what happened? Oh, no, yeah, no, the, the motor got fucked. Oh, um, okay. um, but it, it's a go. it's a new lawnmower, um, so it's under warranty, and so they're 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 fixing the mower itself for free, but I have to pay for like you know service and stuff like that. Yeah. Okay. Um. But uh. But yeah, no. So we we got like two and a uh, almost three inches of rain in like a day and a half. The other the nice. other, yeah, it's been raining a lot up here, so my grass is great. But anyway, um, my last sweat is going to go to the fact that there are way too many games out right now. Um, I, you know, well, how come you're not playing, uh, uh, sea of, sea of stars, right? Am I crazy? Yeah. yeah. Sea of stars. Sea of stars. Um, 
so much is else on my plate. Like I'm just playing so much right now. Um, yep. I, I do want to play it and I do want to play more Starfield and I do want to play Baldur's Gate three, but I'm just not going to open that can of worms right now. Yep. Um, there's too much. It's, it's too much it's, goodness. It's, it's, I mean, it's good. It's, it's good. It's like, I'm so happy that it's such a good, like we're eating so well this year, but oh, man, for sure. sometimes I'm just like, man, give me a minute. Give me a minute to breathe. I would actually like to like, go back and play a game that came out two years ago or yep. replay a game that I just really miss and I just there's no time finally just play no... chicory right Nick yes finally play chicory you know <laughs> actually today I was thinking about I was like I was feeling real nostalgic about Red Dead Redemption 2 and I was like there's just I can't can't do it I can't go back to Red What's Dead the Redemption other one? 2 right now well long if you can play yeah, well yeah. long is the one that Brad likes to harass uh, me about high five crispy <laughs> <laughs> don't don't give him ammunition all right Let's hey, let's pass it over to Brad then. Why don't you why don't you give us your um, four player minute? Here's my four player minute. Who's here? Who here is gonna play Lies of P? Me. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Is Lies of P like elevated beyond like your typical like fucking you know shattered steel? What was the fucking game you played? Steel last? Rising. Steel Rising. Is this Steel Rising tier or is this like? I think this is. That? I think this is above that. But I think yeah. this is somewhere in Should between I spiders. I think this is in between like a spiders like game, which is what uh, Steel Rising is, and uh, what well, I don't know. What's what's like? I don't want to say Souls game because like from Soft Souls games, obviously I don't like whatever the top tier so like non from software Neo. Souls game is. Neo is the top. Okay, so it's somewhere between Soul. Neo <laughs> and a Spiders game. I have a feeling it's going to fall somewhere in there, but I think I think. Being anywhere on that spectrum is it's probably closer probably to pretty spiders, good. right? I, I don't know. We'll see. I don't, I don't know, know, dude. It looks cool. That uh, demo was fun. It, I mean, the I had, idea of like though. customizing weapons by like exchanging blades and halves is kind of cool. Yeah. But a corn open Pinocchio, pretty gets a solid man, 83. How sick is that? It's like a dark oh, yeah. I love game. Pinocchio. <laughs> <laughs> Who doesn't? Who doesn't uh, love Pinocchio? <laughs> they released you two Pinocchio movies. Yeah, yeah. That's. Is there yeah. other don- is there a donkey skill tree? That's oh, question. what about Monstro? Is he in the game? Have they shown yeah. that? Dude, Jiminy Cricket. Has to be in Jiminy some Cricket is in the fucking game. Is it? Like, is yeah. he small? Yeah, he's, in the like demo. he's the hey, listen. I didn't play the demo. He's your he's your maiden. <laughs> I'm just saying. Like, you joke. Oh, I wish I wish also on Game Pass. It's not the games I wanted to be on Game Pass. Like, I really wish like Bomb Rush or like. No one's t- has talked about Shadow Gambit. I don't still have access to Nick's account. I feel like if I did, I would have played Shadow Gambit. I would have expected Chris Davis or Nick to have played it by now, but they haven't. I could have been playing that. God damn it. I wish that mm, was You want to get it figured out like after the show been, tonight? I feel like if, if, if they would have had a Game Pass deal, maybe they still exist. God damn it. I blame Phil Spencer. Anyways, uh, I just want to like, shout out to a game. Don't give me that face chris davis this is your studio and they're dead now and you should also blame phil spencer um <laughs> it's okay to blame phil spencer you know starfield was coming out and all of a sudden he's like you know what we don't have to spend so much of this money on all the cool games i just anymore. i don't understand where you're drawing the dots to connect on oh, your, well, he's on your the blame. He's the blame for here. game pass not being the buck cool the buck year. stops there you know yeah at his cool. desk I mean, it's it's Philly boy. Um, anyways, uh, there is one cool game pass game that like is coming out this year that it seems like no one cares about sadly, but I do. And it's persona five tactica. Mm, yeah, I think people are yeah. underestimating this game. I think it looks really cool. I think it's going to have a lot of like the, the fanciness of a persona game, but it is, you know, it looks kind of just like Mario versus rabbits. Um, but cool persona shit. Um, with you know, fancier presentation. I'm still continue to be excited about the game. I'm glad it's on Game Pass. Um, that's like a perfect Game Pass game for me. And I I still hold that hope that something like Bomb Rush is going to end up there because man, I really want to play it. One of these services I hope gets it. But yeah, Nick, uh, my fuck you for the week goes to Nick for uh, disconnecting his Steam library. I somehow. did nothing. It, my my Steam still says you have access to my library and Carlos but that, that, and Crispy. It's never meant anything. So, how do, well, what the how, fuck am I supposed how, to do about that? How, how it works 
is Brad has permission to play Nick's games, but Brad does not have permission to play Nick's games on Brad's computer. Um, so mm. what has to happen is Nick has to log into his Steam on Brad's computer and say, I authorize this PC Did you get a new computer, Brad? No, no. Um, this happens. It's, it's, it's pro- just it's like probably, drops. It, 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 it happens from time to time. Well, and, you I know, think when you add new people, it drops other people off the list, maybe? Because it's not about dropping so many... people necessarily. Sometimes, like I said, it's, it's dropping machines. PCs, like machines. Like this machine yeah, I mean. is allowed to play. Machines, yeah. yeah. Because you're, you're limited to so many or whatever. Mm-hmm. You let probably you probably gave Joel my spot uh, uh, on your. I did. He not. doesn't even fucking play video games. I know. I'm just kidding. Um. So yeah, I mean, I'm excited. Um. About you know stuff. You know, U- unicorn gambit. What's that game called? Unicorn no. Overlord. Overlord. <laughs> Overlord. That's pretty good. I like what it. What were they thinking? <laughs> Anyways, uh, yeah, so that's it for me. That right. and re- rest in peace, uh, uh, Immortals of Avium, which was an EA AAA published game, Unreal Engine Five shooter, Call of Duty with magic, published by EA. First game from this studio. There's less than 500 reviews for that game on Steam. You know that fucking pseudo regalia game I played? Uh, That has like 3,000 Steam reviews. Horizons Gate has more reviews than Immortals of Avium, an EA published AAA Unreal Engine 5 shooter. That is wild. They they announced today that like half that studio just got laid off. I'm surprised it wasn't the whole fucking studio. I Um. could not think of a bigger bomb in like the past 10 years that is fucking insane no one played that fucking game that's actually crazy someone said someone found one that I, and they still have more reviews than immortals of avium and it's babylon's fall has more oh my God. <laughs> than immortals of avium's team I mean, i'm sure they'll catch up immortals wow. of avium, but from what i understand the game's not even like that bad it's like okay it's like i mean it's just it's just thing. it is an example of a game that maybe could have no. stood out in a different year it no, is just this, this is a tragic a, bomb. This is a colossal no, no, failure. I'm not saying it's not. I'm just saying this game came out like in 2021 or something. I feel like it maybe could have gotten more attention, but like it's imp- it's like it's it's cutthroat out there right now trying to trying to get attention because there's just too much good right. shit to play. I look at Immortals of Avian and I'm like, there's no fucking way. I have zero interest in playing this right now. But, I mean, it, yeah, okay. it really didn't help that the uh, game just had a really bad marketing campaign. I mean, it I don't tried even think it's a it called it in the absolute looking. worst ways. Okay, uh, that's true. That's true. Okay. Um, I mean, the, the, the real quick, uh, the uh, marketing campaign for um, uh, Symphony of War, the Nephilim saga, was like much more, like you know, they they spent way more money on the marketing for Symphony of War, the Nephilim saga, which has um, eight thousand reviews on Steam. I just think y'all are underestimating just how tragic less than 500 reviews are for a triple A <laughs> EA published game. Okay, we okay, we get it. Anyways, that's Let's it. Wrap. <laughs> Moving on. Chris Davis, you're next. Okay. Well, uh I my hype is for finishing out Sea of Stars. Um I'm in love with this game. It is it is going to be very hard for any game to come out for the rest of the year for to dethrone it from my being my game of the year. I love the characters. I love the storytelling. I love the adventure you go on. It is just such a happy, nice game that uh, I'm so glad is doing very well. Like it's sold over a quarter million copies. Like that's not counting like game pass or, or PlayStation plus. So that, that's a good sign for it. Um, Also, it has DLC coming. It has a whole side adventure DLC that was part of the uh, the Kickstarter campaign as a stretch goal. So I'm looking forward to being able to play more of that. Uh, that's I'm great. I'm glad you love it as much as you do. But the, the, the problem is that I'm going to finish it tomorrow. I'm going to get the, the, the whole experience and end it. And then I've got to move on to the bittersweet game that is uh, Shadow Gambit. Uh, I thought I mean, you were going to say Starfield. I thought you would say that then I'm going to sink into a deep depression. No, it's... I'm going to play Starfield once I finish building my computer, which is going to be ne- next month when the new Intel processors oh. come out. That's probably for the best. Shadow Gambit looks so good. 
Yeah, it, it is looks good. fucking great. Let's and it's, just, it's so sad that's that studio just closed. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I've, I've got the card for the creative director here. You know, it's like they're such nice people. They make such great games that had just fit a niche that like I didn't know could exist. You know, five years ago. And you're talking about Sea of Stars? Oh, no, you're talking no. about Shadow Gambit. Shadow Gambit okay. and, and uh, Shadow Tactics and Desperados yeah. 3. Yeah. 1700 like, reviews, Desperado, by the way. Desperados the, uh, 3. For the sh- studio shuttering Shadow Gambit. 1700 reviews. Like, <laughs> I, I, I don't know what the story is behind it other than just like they put their all into it and like all their bets were on it. And like, yeah, it just needed to be a bigger hit, I guess. They just, they didn't have a publisher. And so they just ran out of money. Yeah. So it just, it's going to be bittersweet to play that because I know I'm going to enjoy it, but it I'm looks also really good when I'm playing I'm it. I'm gonna, y'all haven't played it yet. <laughs> it's it's going to be a swan song for a studio that deserved. I'm better. mad. You haven't played it yet, Brad. I'm mad. I'm mad. I didn't buy it. I didn't I'm buy just... it. That's why I haven't played it, but I right. bought it. Well, you're part of the problem then. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay, buddy. Every time you, you don't buy down. a video game, you're hurting workers. <laughs> you're saying it's my fault they, they died, Chris Davis? Yeah. Get you know him. what? Yes. Right. I blame you. All right. What? What is there? Is there anything else you want to say? Or? I guess the other thing is that uh, on the flip side of that, I'm hyped because I'm building a new computer. I've uh, got my tower, my mid tower. Uh, I installed fans in it last weekend. Uh, I built my brand new desk. So what happened to your microphone? Is that your bed? Huh? Is that your what bed? Did you just on do? your left? Did you show us your no, desk? No, this is this was... is the cat bed because if I didn't have this here, they would annoy <laughs> the fuck out of me at my desk. So <laughs> I've always had this here like this. for hundreds of episodes. We're yeah. going off the rails. So yeah. That's my four right. minute. Crispy. Ah, OK. Uh, I got three things real quick. We'll just do them real quick. Uh, I mean, I don't really do hype. Thank you. Fuck you. Thank God. Sweat. But I might this week. My fuck you this week goes to me because it's been like three days since I played Baldur's Gate because I'm in act three now and I'm at the point where like time matters and like mm. there's there's a quest that I have active that if I get, if I long rest, the quest is going to resolve and it'll resolve negatively. And and I'm trying to figure out if I can even if I even have enough resources to, like, try to do something about it. But, like, I kind of don't think I do. And it's just, like, stressing me out because I don't know what's going to happen if the quest revolves resolves negatively. And I can't find answers to that anywhere. And I tried well, asking. Let's, let's talk buddy. after this. Let's talk. Use those no. scrolls. Well, it's it's just, no. I got scrolls and stuff, and that's not the problem. The problem is, is I don't know what the problem is. But I, I like I just I I got myself in a little pickle, and and I got scared, and I walked away from the game for a couple of days. Um, and in that time, I was playing Starfield. Uh, my the other thing I want to say is that I'm still playing Armored Core Six, and that game is pretty cool i really love that game and i want to add my voice to the chorus of people who are saying that bandai namco should have from soft make a gundam game because that would be incredible uh it's so much fun I love would it. you say the people were ready the people were ready they were ready nick <laughs> they welcomed they welcomed the return of the king with open arms I'm, I'm glad he said, should like should he enter into the city and rule there as your king? And the people said, verily, yay, verily. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I, don't know. I mean, but the people oh, liked it. The people were kind of into it. The people, yeah, it was fine. It's uh, people. And Starfield, again, I feel like there was a lot of negativity in our conversation. There is stuff to enjoy. And if you're just kind of like, I really like Bethesda RPGs, then you're definitely going to like this. This is probably the strongest that, like, Fallout's ever been, even with the, like, disjointed, even with the disjointed, like, non-discovery and non-exploration. Like, it's still pretty strong. Why weren't you saying this earlier? I'm saying it now. We were talking. I'm saying it now. It's strong. Like, if you like stuff about Fallout, there's stuff here to like. I don't know that it's going to be, like, 
the perfect experience for everything you want from that game. Um, but there's 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 a reason to play it, and there's a reason to see what's going on here. And there are some really cool ideas that just kind of make you like, oh, if they do a sequel to this in 10 years, then maybe it'll be cool, you know? Like, that kind of thought. Mm. Um, uh, uh, I did have one last thing I was going to say about that, and I just you knocked it out of my head. What was it? Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. Um, Starfield kind of <laughs> cool, uh, but also... I'm super, super scared that, like, as soon as I build my dream ship, as soon as I feel like my ship is, like, done, I'm not going to want to play the game anymore. You oh, know what I mean? No. Which That scares which, me, too. Like, people that, like Nightshader who played for 70 hours and then decided, eh. yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, the, yeah, the, yeah. The funny thing is, this is the... I've heard people say that, like, the actual main quest line of this game is pretty great and, like... Even I, delivers on some pretty it, great stuff near the end. Is it? Because I feel like I've done a lot of it, and it's been... Although, I don't know how long it is, and I don't have any real way of, like, judging where I'm in at it. Like, where where I'm at in the line. Um, I will say that, like, I've only gotten one power so far, so maybe I'm pretty early. Um, I hope it opens up, because so far it's just been kind of like... Uh, blah, blah, blah. Okay, give me money so I can go buy more ship parts, please. You know? Gotcha. And... Fuck, like, the ships you can build are fucking cool. They're so fucking cool. And that's what makes my frustrations with the game so frustrating. You know what I mean? Because it's not like it's all bad. There's really cool stuff that I feel like is being failed by the bad stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that's kind of where I'm at. But it's on Game Pass, so, like, that is, like, awesome. Check it out. Uh... I will say, if I had to deal with loading screens in this game, though, I would kill myself. <laughs> There's so many of them. There's so many opportunities for loading screens that, like, if this was anything like Skyrim, where you actually had to, like, sit and wait for shit to load, unplayable. <laughs> I gotcha. don't know. Gotcha. Uh, whatever. Gotcha. That's the end of my... Cool, cool, cool. cool. Alright, uh, then what I will say in closing is that um, I, if I had a sweat this week, it'd probably be Starfield, because... The, for me, I'm everything like, looking at all like, the the marketing and seeing the reviews and kind of like following the discourse or whatever. It still like I, I'm still very excited to play it, and it seems like kind of my jam. Even though I'm still kind of like I hear everything you're saying, and I'm like that doesn't ju- that doesn't like sound like what I'm seeing. But like I'm sure it'll make sense once I start playing it. I just you know I hope I hope to God that I can play this game and find some magic in it because I want, I want that magic to be there. I want it to, I want it to work for me. Um, so I'm a little nervous about that, but on the other, on the flip side, um, we're approaching spooky season and it's starting to get, there's lots of cool stuff Dude, on the horizon. I'm already, I'm already. I know. I know there's, there's, there's some, you know, I, um, I watched Halloween three. Yeah. You said that like last week or like two weeks ago or whatever. Yeah. Um, there's some high I mean, quality garbage like, coming out from your streaming favorite streaming service. There's a lot of there's a lot of high quality garbage. I don't know, dude. There's a new Mike Flanagan uh, Netflix series, which are always amazing. The, the Fall of the House of Usher comes out in October. I'm super fucking excited to watch that. Um, Hulu just dropped a trailer for a, a, a series based on the Goosebumps, which was my fucking obsession as a child, and it stars Justin Long, and it looks kind of dark and fucked up. It actually kind of reminds me of that scary stories to tell in the dark movie which wasn't terrible um so i'm actually kind of eager to watch that for some some nostalgia um and i don't know man i'm just like i'm starting to make a mental inventory there's all these like cool all, suddenly there's all these cool like movies that are going straight to streaming services that that sound that look and sound pretty pretty twisted i got tickets for the exorcist uh in october yeah. like i just just there's a lot of stuff I'm getting excited. Spooky season is here, and I'm kind of feeling the spirit more though, more so than I have recently. Alan Wake 2 mm, mm, is sounding better and better every time I hear about it. Have you watched Man. X and Pearl? Yes, I did. There's They're a great. third one coming out, right? Yes, there is. Um, I forgot what it's called. Oh, the third one's called Maxine, or Max XXX. Is that this like, year? Uh... I don't know Whatever. if this year it's, but it, if you haven't oh, watched them, they're good. They're good. They <laughs> just turned that into them. a whole ass franchise, didn't they? Yeah. They're they're just just like, this is a thing filmed, now. That's they what, filmed that's them. Horror, has yeah, I know been, that's like profitable yeah, these days. Well, they filmed like, them. Like, back sequels are good now. 
they filmed them like back to back, and they're all they were all filmed in secret. Like they, like nobody even like what by the time they mean? announced it. No, by the time they announced the first movie, they had already finished like all three of the films. Like it was just kind of like, here we go. Which, but whatever. Um, they're good. You should you should watch them, especially if you have any kind of nostalgia for like movies like the Texas Chainsaw. The sequel so, kind of spoils the first one, though. The se- the sequel is a prequel. I'll just say I'll just say that. Right. That spoils the first one. <laughs> sure, sure. But you shouldn't watch the second one before you watch the first one. Um, I thought you guys hated spoilers. Shut up. Um, I don't know. I'm just saying a lot of cool stuff. A lot of movies on the horizon I want to see. A lot of shows I want to watch. Mm. Um, so good. Know. Good time. Good time. We're eating well this year. And great, kind of all... great time for a rider strike. Oh, World yeah. Rift 2 oh, is yeah. coming out. <laughs> Castlevania Nocturne at the end of the month. They yes. they announced yeah. that they're doing another season of uh, live action One Piece. Yeah, which is, which is like, yeah, I, dude, I watched the first season of the live action One Piece. It's not bad. Like it's kind it. of fun. It's certified fresh. <laughs> what it's kind of cool. wacky dark universe do we live in when the live action One Piece is celebrated? And, and the, the live Bebop action is... Cowboy Bebop oh, is a yeah, yeah. No, no, fucking no. wet fart. Because One Piece is like goofy fun that you have a little bit of latitude with. And like you, Cowboy Bebop, you can't fuck yeah, with that. Fuck with like you can't fuck with that. And yet it's just did. it's just different. This is the kind of material that sh- that that should be getting adapted into live action because it's just like mm. goofy, low stakes fun. That is also like really rad and awesome. Like, you know, mm. all right. Let's wrap this up. Oh, I'm also watching The Fall right now. If you've ever seen The Fall, that's kind of what. No, which one? Oh, it's called it's called The Fall. If you're in, if you're into kind of like I don't know how to describe it. It's like this move. This show is creeping me the fuck out, and it's probably like the most. It feels is like the Gillian most real Anderson? portrayal. Yeah, the one with Gillian Anderson. Um, but it's like the most real, kind of like impactful portrayal of like. A serial killer, the side of like Mind Hunter. If you watch that, Mind Hunter. You didn't. Wait, you is that the, Mind Hunt- Is Mind Hunter the Julian Barrett comedy? No, no. Mind Hunter is, is the is Mind Hunter is the uh, David. Is it David Fincher? Is it? Da- what I think I- it's David Fincher? It's it's based on a yeah. book. Oh, Mind Horn. How the how, the, how, the, uh, how yeah. uh, profiling was developed for the FBI yeah. and it's tracking serial killers and stuff. David Fincher. So is that what I said? Did I say David Fincher? Yeah. My hunter is such a great Lynch. show. You said David Lyncher. Did I? Did I combine <laughs> those two? <laughs> David Fincher. Dude, D- my hunter is fantastic if you oh. like that, but it'll fuck you up. And oh, this, this show is, is, is giving it a run for its money. Um, but yeah, anyways, that's all I'll say about that. It's a great show. I'm I remember thinking. one last thing I looked up while you were talking about. Remember that that developer called the Chinese Room? Yeah. Uh, I looked up what that is, and it's a reference to a philosophical thought experiment called mm-hmm. the Chinese Room argument. That I just you were, you guys were like, that's a weird name, but it's it's like a thing, I guess. It's so. a thing. It's a thing. All right. Cool. That's- I don't know. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Facts. <laughs> Facts. All right, uh, guys. I know we went a little long. It's been a couple of weeks since we recorded, and a lot of stuff's happened. So thank you for sticking with us. Um, but of course, we're eating good right now. A lot of games to play. So we will be back next week to talk about more video games. In the meantime, uh, find us at fourplayernetwork.com. Join our Discord at discord.gg/fourplayer. Maybe catch us on the stream if we're maybe going to do some more Texas Chainsaw Massacre or something like that. Um, on twitch.tv slash four player podcast all spelled out and uh we'll catch you next week so uh be good to each other play video games and good night bye bye